Are we live? Are we live? Seems good. Let's continue with space exploration. Wherein we are, as ever, creeping towards the final push. Uh, to, to reach our goal of continuous three science per second. Which turns out... Oops, I forgot to turn the sound back on for this. Uh, turns out to be a loftier goal than originally expected. Hopefully we'll get there eventually. Valdak, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, so I'm considering... Making more drop-offs than are necessary for each core fragment type. As in... All of our outposts for uh, core for iridite core fragments presumably add up to less than three hundred and thirty-one per second. That's actually quite a lot. Um, if I do a gr if I check the graph for how much we're actually producing for iridite, it's not going to give us the max rate that we're capable of necessarily because some of this stuff might be full at one of the outposts. Do I have my doubts? Um, we want drill entity 19 times this. 43.6 per second plus triple F in six days, indeed. Uh, let's see. How many do we have here? So that was 43.6 plus 51.6. I think I'm already misremembering. It wasn't 41.6 for the first one, was it? 19 times this. 43.6. Okay. How many more iridite outposts do we have? Two. Stromhurst. Uh, 24. 54. And last but not least is Renato. Renato... It only has 13 drills, and it's definitely a lot bigger than that. Oh, wow. Renato's 9.3k, and we've only got 13 drills there. It is uh, pretty far away. We have to go via Foenestra, and it's not super close to the interstellar map. But still, if we're going to have it, we may as well have more drills here. Uh, so we'll try and remember to expand Renato first. If, uh, if we need more iridite. 62.8. 212. 212 per second is our max rate at the moment. For iridite or frags. Why is this saturated? Um, Hello? Why are we not picking up the iridite core frags here? A wild tea hex appears, indeed. I am the sky, welcome in. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. The fact that we've got almost 3k uh, space elevator cables here tells me that the ships are coming here fairly often, but not often enough, apparently. I keep coming back to, I need to design a better dispatch system, but, like, it's already gone through so many iterations, and I've racked my brains so many times trying to think of how to do better. 
it's getting to, to the point where I feel like I should just... It, it would have been so much easier to just have dedicated lines for specific uh, outposts. Alas. I mean, I was pretty happy with... Let's go fix this. I was pretty happy with what I built, but... The results definitely leave something to be desired still. Is this empty? Not really. Um, should put a combinator back here and we'll just have a train take it away. Welcome in, welcome in. A little bit more energetic today, but it still need to be careful not to overdo my voice. Uh, okay, active provider. Sand. Uh, rebalance these two. Also, I happen to have some sand on me. Okay. And we'll wait for a train to be scheduled here. And just make a slight adjustment to the train schedule to make sure it gets rid of absolutely all of it. Uh, and then we've got not that much enriched vulcanite over here. I guess I'll borrow the sputa again. Drop it off up this way. Or just into the output should be fine. I don't think it's ever... Well, I was going to say I don't think it's ever fully saturated, but I stand corrected. Are we going to get there just in time to find some empty space? Nice. Perfect. Wunderbar. Stecky. What is that noise? That was weird. Okay. Is there still not a train coming here? Oops, I double connected it. That might have been why there wasn't a train coming. Because these signals were doubled going into the logistic train stop input. So it was still... Provide stack threshold 100. Evil Pla, welcome in. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. It also would have been minimum train length 8. There we go. That should get rid of all the dregs that might be left invisibly in the bulk rail loaders. Uh, and then we just have a bunch of crushed to get rid of. Are you just about done, Ski? That looks weird. All right. Get out of here. Fantastic. And we'll go drop this stuff up, uh, off up here. Welcome in, welcome in, Evil Pla. T hacks and cat. Perfect. Fachibam, welcome in. I don't get how your game looks so smooth with 30 UPS. Uh, I think. It's probably something that Twitch does, actually. Um, because I've noticed... It, 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 I'm just going by vibes here. It's not something I know for a fact, but... Um, I've noticed that Twitch seems to make a game look even smoother than when you play it, even if you're playing at the frame cap. Um, maybe there's some kind of interpolation or like, slight blurring effect or something like that. So yeah, uh, Twitch might be doctoring what I'm recording directly a little bit. I've noticed it with some of my local recordings from OBS. Huh. 
Interesting. Yeah, I, I, I have no idea, like, what is actually doing it, but there does seem to be some kind of after effect. What's going on here? Oh, I remember this. Right. That build was kind of... Built it bit by bit and then wished I'd just designed the whole lot to start with. That's actually... Not shaped like we're used to. Let's put it that way. Alright. Now we can get rid of this. And that. And this and this. So there. Got it. Get them. Raus, raus. Lord Vader, welcome in. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. We will be getting them once we figure out exactly where they are. Um, looks like this is empty. This is super empty. Except for these enriched Vulcanite. God damn it. Let's finish deconning this block as well. Nice. Can also do it this way. And ship C. Boop, boop. It's so nice having click to move. I wish we could have it with not just Spidertrons. You remember me? I do. I don't have a godlike memory, but I have certainly seen you around a few times. Glacier Wolf, welcome in. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. I bet there is a mod for click to move outside spiders, maybe. Perhaps. Pixel perfect. There we go. Um, I guess let's just pick this up. Hopefully we can squeeze that in. Just barely. Not. Let's get rid of the module inserter. And that's still not enough. Okay. I'm just going to dump some random stuff in here. We'll come back for it later. And drop that off like so. Commit. Uh... Violet, Queen, Shia, Wolf. It looks like it didn't... It looks like it didn't kill the link you posted anyway. That butt didn't smash me. Yeah, there you go. I have no idea why. Uh, don't tell me there's... Nope, there is room. For the enriched. Fantastic. And now we can finally, finally get rid of the last of these old Vulcanite builds. Probably a mod along the lines you asked for. Move with mouse. Nice. So where should we try and push our bottleneck today? Uh, science is complaining that it's not running, but I turned science off, so that's why. I'd like to see Singularity tech cards catch up at, at f first, at least. No Deep Space 3. No Naquium Tesseract. No Arcosphere C. 
Even though we have a dedicated thing for switching epsilons into C. <sighs> okay. Today's the day I'm going to attempt a little idea I've been floating. Um, instead of having like a central arcosphere balancer thing that's generic and theoretically can work with any uh any other machines that are swapping arcospheres um but it might have trouble keeping up with very specific sets uh i was thinking maybe we should try to set up arcosphere flipping specifically for certain recipes so that they can each have their own little system i think it's going to be Pretty difficult to design, but it might be super, super worth it. Get out of here. Alright, we'll come back for the purple belts and stuff. Right after this. Master of my fate, welcome in. Good to see you again. Hope you're doing well today. Glad you got out of prison. We were all worried. Uh, well, I'm... I was never in literal prison, but I'm at least half out of perpetual illness prison, I hope. Feeling a bit better today, because at least I have my caffeinated drink of choice. It was pretty rough without it. Are you going to touch Arcosphere Balancer? I am. I am, I am. We're going to try to design a bunch of little specialized balancers instead of... instead of a central one. If this works and we can figure out the formula for creating a specialized balancer that counterbalances a specific recipe uh, and it's not too difficult to repeat the process uh, that's going to be pretty cool I think especially if you know if the mods if the devs make changes in the future or if there's new recipes um, obviously it helps if we have that process ready to go I never tagged this Solenoid. There we go. And we are still short on Holmium all the time. That's mildly upsetting. Do we need more spaceships? Probably. We add we only added like 10% before. Let's see. Verb T probably doesn't have that much. It's very, very close by. Only 52k. Um, spread across the entire planet. Woot. Woot. Two whole years, Blue Lightning DT. Thank you so much. Welcome in, welcome in. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. And very much appreciated. Thank you. Two years, wow. I dropped that mod link in your Discord, if you want to look at it. Okay, thank you. Much obliged, Gla uh, Glacier Wolf. Uh, how much... Yeah, 259,000 Hormonite Core Fragments waiting at Orpheus is not a small amount. Uh, especially because it's close enough that it's a little bit better to go straight there than via Foenestra. Ooh, the Wigglebot is doing its thing. I recall we had some trouble with the automation of this before, but I can't remember what happened. I think we fixed it. So, this is uh, interstellar travel data for which we have to fly this great big disco ball back and forth in interstellar space, but uh, it's not so specific that we can't just fly back and forth on the spot in interstellar space. 
so that the return journey is fairly short. Um, but obviously we need some circuit magic to make that happen. Um, but yeah, we'd better check on this at some point. It's only go th gone through the first 30 blank cards. I believe it's set up so that... Yeah, if we run out of blank cards, go home. Uh, and I guess that's it. I guess we're just assuming that there's plenty of fuel and power for the entire trip. Okay, then. Oh, hey, we do still have a ship where laser damage is relevant. Anyway, back to whatever it is we were doing. We should probably add some more spaceships. Alright, let's add five more to get a total of 60. And hope the UPS doesn't drop down to like 15 if we keep adding them. Poor egg holler. First the floor. Maybe I should put some buffer chests for spaceship floor right here. I guess the most of the bots would have to fly over here anyway. Uh, and once these are in place, we want to populate the memory cell. And name this thing 46? No, it's 56. Oops. Yeah, 56. Uh, so once that's fully fueled, it will head on down to Hagen. And then it'll get dispatched automatically. Played on a supercomputer? Time for someone to compile a distributed computing version. Maybe. Well, I don't know that my computer's the most optimal build you could ever chase. But still. Did we empty all this stuff out? Uh... Yeah, let's make some more room, though, before we go do some more decon stuff. What? What did I just press? Control click? No? Control shift click. That's what it is. Control shift click brings up factory search. Don't need this much right now. Oh my god, that's a lot of chain signals. And prod sixes. And I brought back some crushed vulcanite. Okay. That'll do for now. Are we still how how much more charging do we Oh. Oh, we're down to like a third of our electricity here. I feel like I should change the ratio here a bit. How about we do one solar panel just so it's got some passive recharging. And we'll drop the battery storage down by a quarter. That base vid is a 300k SPM cluster, <laughs> indeed. Factorio base tour, 300k SPM. Wow. So it's already been done. 300,000 sites per minute. That's... That's not a small number. It's been such a long time since I played vanilla that I don't really have a feel for it, but I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure that's a large number. Yep, 
Get out of here. Can I like shift? No. Alright. This should be pretty empty, right? Does Nugget still get dropped off by train stops? I don't think so. No, it doesn't. Need to take it over here. How much Nugget is this? Almost a train load. Mm. Okay, I... I was going to say I'm going to procrastinate. Actually, no. Let me borrow a LTN train. And come on down. Actually, go here first. Wait for inactive. Oh, that's going to take some time. Uh, can I speed this up? Red text. I sent a screenshot. What do you think I should do? Reduce the number of plants and add an additional sulfur belt? Or just reduce the number of plants? That is noisy. Uh, you mean on the Discord? Hold on. Uh, reduce the number of plants and add an additional sulfur belt, or just reduce the number of plants. This is SE, right? I'm guessing from the beacons. You will eventually have uh, bigger chemical plants, bigger, faster chemical plants with four module slots. Rate calc. Oh, that's measured in transport belts. Two, three transport belts of 132 sulfur per second. Damn. Hmm. I guess you could always put the sulfur on one side. Hundred and thirty two versus forty five nine. That's like four it's it's more than three belts, right? No, it's three belts. That's pretty awkward. You probably don't need that much sulfur. Uh yeah, like sulfuric acid doesn't get consumed that quickly. One point five K per second. You could you, you could probably just build it smaller, at least for now. I'd upgrade it when you have uh, faster belts and stuff. Check the, uh, what is it, the production screen. Like, see how much sulfur you've been consuming for the last 10 hours or something. Well, let's, let's look here. How much does this base consume? Sulfuric acid. Last... 26k per minute and you were looking at 1.6k per second right no it's like a bit under a thousand per second so you're looking at like uh almost yeah more than double the speed of sulfuric acid that i've been consuming for the last 10 hours while you're still on blue belts I'd probably just build it smaller. One thing for myself, uh, if I'm going to play SEK2 again, um, I think 
I would probably, in the editor space, try to design everything for the max tier builds from the very beginning. Uh, and like I did with some of the science builds upstairs, uh, even though it's awkward with the smaller machines early on, uh, whoops, that's the wrong place. Uh, just kind of try and, like, shape it so that it'll fit the bigger machines later on. With, uh, with temporary extra space like this. We're not gonna need this any- actually, we might. Didn't I tell you to... Wait, what? Oh, that's full. Okay. Let's go sort that out. Once we're done mucking around, clearing out some of these old builds, um, I'm gonna get on to trying to redesign the Arcospheres. Move two plants, it'll look like this. Yeah, you can always expand it, right? You're, you're producing way, 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 way more than you're going to need. Uh, unless you're playing catch-up. Where's that train? Oh, there it is. Uh, for the stage of the game where you're still using blue belts. It's going to be really hard to find room for this stuff. Okay, maybe not that hard. Uh, can I... can I pick this stuff up? Is the train technically not stopped? Okay. Should probably get rid of this stone. Alright, shift C. Let's fly over here. Shift C. And drop. Fantastic. Once or twice more with feeling. I think we still have some more over here. No? Oh, it's... Okay, that's pretty much it. I thought this one had some left. Maybe it was because it was... Nope. I'm confused. Alright. Could you please go pick up this? And then... Come over here again. Wait till empty, and once empty, uh, return to an LTN depot. Six eleven per minute. If I leave it with two plants on each side, it would look strange. Four plants in a hundred by hundred block. Yeah. That's why I ended up doing some, like, water block sized builds. Stuff like this. I'm pretty sure this is our only plastic producer. in the entire game right now. Wait, there's one over here still. Huh. Did I switch off the input for it? I did not. Probably should have done that by now. Let's just double check. Our previous work. Plastic... Consumption last 10 hours, 11k per minute. 
this thing's capable of, drum roll, 4.6k per minute. Hmm. Might need more than one machine. I could always go give it, like, maxed out modules, or I could, like, double this. Lord Seru, welcome in. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. Early stream? Well, this is supposed to be my regular start time, but it's been rough lately. Oh, this is... what the hell? This is all speed modules. Oops, all speed modules. Uh, and yes, I did see the triple F. It's got some nice... Nice little... Nice little quality improvements. 1700, that's a lot of power. 360, negative 80%. Okay, cool. Uh, how many prods do we have right now? 28. Do we have any in the mall? Why don't I just search like this? Tier 9 modules, all surfaces. How long is that going to take? A while. I wish I could tell it to just search two surfaces. Uh, 13 upstairs. Also 11 speed modules and 14 speed modules. Not a whole lot, actually. What are we waiting on for efficiency? Quantum processors, that figures. It's going to be Holmium cable. It is very much Holmium cable. There's just never enough Holmium. I think... Another thing I would do different... If I were to do another playthrough... Uh, is... Home base has to be... Either a Holmium planet or a uh, Vitamelange planet. I don't know whether it would be good to do a big one, though. Because a big one costs way more energy to get on and off planet. That's particularly problematic earlier in the playthrough. But also, because, well, we're, we used to have our spaceships come back to Hagen orbit, and then we'd have trains take core fragments down the space elevator so that we could take advantage of productivity modules. But it ended up being too much traffic for the trains, so now we have the ships land directly, which costs... Significantly more antimatter, but the planet's not that big. The moon isn't. Um, antimatter's relatively cheap, but the, it would still maybe not be the best idea to set up shop on like a 9k radius planet. We're doing another playthrough? I, I didn't promise that. I mean... If, if, if we're not all burned to death in 10 years, I'm sure it'll happen. Uh, let's make another ship. And did I get rid of... Where's that? Where's that train? Oh, I already picked it up. I wasn't even thinking. All right. I wonder why our module production has been so slow lately. We stopped researching for a bit, but I guess those things haven't saturated yet. It takes a lot to support um, Singularity tech cards, I think. Yeah, six Deep Space Science packs for eight Singularity tech cards. So it's kind of like... How six of these supports eight Deep Space 4s. So they're kind of like about expensive as Deep Space 4s, I guess. 
as far as the resources that are actually hard to get are concerned. Could you answer my question? I don't think it's cool to send the same message more than twice. Uh, sorry, what was the question? 59,520 acid per minute. Uh, yes. Welcome in, Jamort. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. You need to more faster those modules, indeed. Um, was that the question? Or was it... Did I scroll past it earlier? No, that was the sulfur question. Okay, cool. Let's clean this stuff up. Do we still have stone in here? We do. Um... I could maybe just send this back to the mall, is what I would say. If my bags weren't so full. How about this? How full is this? That's almost exactly a train load. Perfect. Come get rid of it, please. Careless. Yeah, my next idea, the, the next run I want to do after this, um, partly for a change of pace and partly because I think it's going to be a bit of a shock, uh, is I'm, I'm, re I'm remaining ignorant of Vanilla Factorio as much as I can right now. Uh, and I want to go back into it. Just, just a pure vanilla run, not even quality of life mods. Let's see how different it is. See how sad it'll make me. Maybe sad's the wrong word. I think we already got rid of that stone. Fantastic. I know I'll definitely be upset without mods like Picker Dollies, that's for sure. Am I just going to delete these blocks? Yeah, why am I be why am I being so careful about this? Just clean it up. That's a lot of black reinforced plate we've picked up as well. Um, but yeah, I figure setting a relatively modest mega base ish target uh, for a vanilla playthrough with absolutely no mods coming from SE. Uh, the shock of how different that is might be a bit interesting. Oh, the spider's empty again run out of juice. Alright, we're just going to sit here for a minute while we jump into the editor. And what I want to do is... What should we pick as an example? How about this build? Where's the... Space, space. I guess, uh, first things first. We want a blank canvas. Something like this. Um, but we are going to use...
I don't care about the infrastructure around it right now. I'm just interested in the rate calc. Maxed out modules. Do we even need those though? Let's put a beacon too. I, I can't remember the calculation for how many Naquim Tesseracts we actually need. Um, are there research? I, I, I assume there are researchers that consume both Deep Space 4 and Singularity tech cards at the same time. There are. We're trying to do one right now. Or, or at least we were. So, for Deep Space 4, we want 3 per second. That's 3.5. It's looking for like 2.65 Deep Space 3s per second. This is enough. Probably more like 2 per second. So... Considering the ratio is the same over here, uh, three per second. Deep space science pack. Yeah, we're gonna need we're gonna need like five, maybe a little little bit less. Um. Five Deep Space Science Pack 3s per second to support our eventual target. And that would be less than one Naquim Tesseract per second. This is capable of exactly 0.57. Pretty sure we've got other consumers. Uh, I mean, we definitely do, because these are required for Deep Space 4. Okay, I'm getting, I'm getting sidetracked. Let's just figure out, as a proof of concept, if we're trying to make, let, let's just do one, one machine at a time. Um, does rate calc tell us if, if the recipe keeps flipping I think some of them do some of them don't could be wrong okay no that's always the same okay so basically we need to convert zetas xi and lambdas to Epsilon, Phi, and Theta. Welcome in, Westy. One solution is to launch 45k collectors. It's not about how many Arcospheres we've got anymore. It's, um... It's trying to keep up with rebalancing them. Especially for very specific inputs. So, oh, this is going to be difficult. Let's lay out our different Arcosphere recipes. And there's two more that we hope we don't need. These four become these four, and vice versa. Okay. So let's see. Our outputs are... They're going to keep swapping, right? Let's just do some cheat IO. Outputs with these three... Outputs with these three. 
outputs were these, and now they've swapped. Oh boy, is it random? Don't tell me it's random. Hold on, can we like filter these? Um, data? Whitelist. Uh, reserve, reserve, epsilon. Uh, phi. Gamma and omega. Okay. Why have you stopped? Because there's no... There's no Naquim Tesseract. Okay. Um, how about we make these a little bit slower so that we can actually see them swing? I can't. Bruh. And then just delete everything. Okay, so those three... Those three... Th th these two and this one? What? Is it actually random how it switches... Which outputs happen? The Arcosphere outputs are effectively ran randomized, but number of Arcospheres in the output is guaranteed to match the input. Occasionally switches to the alternate recipe of the same name. So does that mean there's only two recipes? I think so? Everything but Theta Epsilon. No, but we saw like this one, this one, and this one swing before, didn't we? Hold on. Okay. Theta Epsilon Phi, the top three. Yeah, it, it should sometimes be the top three, and sometimes the... Well, not the bottom three, that's not how it works. Theta Epsilon Phi, Phi Gamma Omega, so always it outputs a Phi, right? That output a Phi... No, that was Omega Theta Epsilon. The recipe lies. It doesn't always output a phi. Bruh. Well, that makes it a hell of a lot more difficult to set up a super specific set of balances for it. Hmm. I don't want to have to do a generic balance for each build or something. Okay, so these two inputs actually line up with these two, which don't always go together. Also, those other two are also outputs from this recipe, so that doesn't help. Hmm. 
What if I just look at every recipe that leads to one of these inputs? Isn't that... there's two lambdas, two xi, and two zetas, right? One sec. Going through my water awfully quickly. It's kind of warm here. Okay. So that outputs lambda. Let, let's see who our candidates are. You output epsilon. You output lambda. You output... no, don't want that. Zeta. And there's going to be three more, right? This one outputs epsilon. No, no I'm looking for C, not epsilon. C, lambda. There should be one more, right? Zeta. That's a lot. That really is a lot. So it's always going to output three. We just don't know which of these three. Uh, are any of the other recipes a bit more reasonable? Are we starting on hard mode? No, nope, I'm seeing the same text. Although this only outputs lambda and phi. Lambda and phi, zeta, omega input. Zeta swaps with omega directly, so that I that idea is right out. <sighs> this really is more and more pointing towards having a central balancer. Outputs are random, but always match the input count. Same, same, but different. So we did start on hard mode because this one has uh, five potential Arcosphere outputs and three inputs. But... All of these take in two inputs and output two to four possible outputs. And this one's an absolute nightmare. Four inputs, and it can output anything. Just... just anything. Wait, no. I think this one's actually not random. There's no text... ...explaining that it flip-flops. There's two of these. Maybe it does flip-flop but not randomly, which is what I was expecting from the other recipes. Uh, I guess we need some fluid. Oh, that is slow. Give me some super speed modules.
can't place I can't place a cheat item on space platform plating apparently. All right. Um Wait, that's the wrong wrong futon. All right, so we got C, theta, phi, omega. C, theta, phi, omega again. So it doesn't flip flop, it's random which four it spits out. Lambda, zeta, etc. Lambda, zeta, etc. C, etc. I need a big sample size to even suppose that it's consistent. Yeah, see, now it's done three of these in a row. So no, it's... it seems to be pretty random. So basically we need, if we were to do like local rebalances for specific recipes, uh, we would need to do uh, basically rebalances for every possible set of outputs. Just let the bots sort it out? That was the idea before, but they struggle to keep up. And or the rebalances struggle to keep up. It's surprisingly difficult to reach our target. And once again, we have no Arcosphere Xyz again. Even though we've got a dedicated uh, a dedicated machine to turn Epsilons into Xyz over here. Though maybe it could run a little bit faster if it had a couple more catalysts. Maybe I should go do that. Uh, let's drop off this green crab. And... While we're doing... Uh, while we're theorizing, we'll see if dropping a couple more thetas into this thing... I guess I could just do it like this. Wait, no, there's no requesters. Actually... Also, why are these filtered? Probably just for show. Can we please get two thetas? Thank you. And turn that back on. Just shove them all in. No, wait, I added more than I was supposed to. Now I don't know how many are in there. Probably too many. I don't think it can jam. Uh, but we'll see, I suppose. Well, I guess these can just run continuously. That gives us 1.46 Arcosphere Epsilons to Arcosphere Xyz per second. That sounds like a lot, kind of. I wonder if it'll actually start to catch up now. God. Maybe I should just do like eight sets of these. And just spit out whichever uh, Arcosphere we're lowest on at all times. And not even worry about which the input is.
That would be 32 machines. 32 machines just for balancing. Ugh. I want to say I'm not a fan of that, but, like... Arcosphere C is creeping back into actually having... Actually, actually existing uh, very, very quickly. Oh, now we're actually bottlenecked on Naquim Plate. That's a pleasant change of pace. Hmm... Yeah, I definitely put at least, like, one or two more Arco Thetas, the catalysts in, than were necessary. Yeah, I guess it's fine. Uh, let's drop this crap off. I guess we'll head over here as well. And... That'll do. Alright, we empty. We empty. Rip battery charge. Let's head back to the mall. I guess we're just trying to get around this spaceship. I have isolated local balancers, it's just my normal balancer, which doesn't output to a network. Yeah, that's the easy solution. Uh, at the rate we're going, like, I was hoping we could have relatively few grab facilities just for Arcosphere rebalancing at each, um, at each separate build, but... Considering all the possible different outputs and the number of flips that we need to do for each one, it really is looking like just having a generic balancer for each build uh, might be the way to go. And hope to God that if we have a generic balancer at each build, uh, there won't be one build with, like, one Arcosphere type that's always at zero, if it's trying to go fast. I guess. Slow spider is slow. Even if we do do that, uh, it's going to be a whole thing rebuilding rebuilding it to fit together nicely. Especially considering the surprising number of machines that we need uh, to support our targets. Hmm... Yep, even with this thing oversaturated, we're seeing zero Arcosphere Xyz sometimes. I also have a new draft version, which doesn't preload machines to the max. Only loads what's needed. Saves on spheres. Yeah, we built that uh, at the beginning when spheres were precious. I was kind of hoping if we could get away with all of it in one block... Uh, the number of spheres that we would have sitting in inputs, you know, wouldn't be that severe of a hit, if that makes sense. But alas. Wow, these things are still running all day? Uh... 
now trains okay? Yeah, I think they're okay. So why is the mole always trying to catch up on the charged packs? Oh no, not all surfaces. No. Okay, you're fine. You're fine. You're fine. I have a feeling we have more than three depots, though. Uh... This one... This one... This one. Isn't there a depot up here? Why doesn't it have charged packs? It's got a bunch of them in... the output. Apparently there's 600 in the row... Oh. Oh. Uh, oh? Wait, what? Hold on. You're only connected to logistic network. Apparently there's 660 charge packs in the logistic network here. But the requester ones don't count. You're not reading from over here, are you? Surely not. No. Where are these... Is there 600 here? There is. 660. Okay. Feels weird. Those extra passive providers from uh, from back when we were trying to fix something. Well, as long as they have charged packs, I guess. I'm getting sidetracked. Okay, so what... Okay, how about this? What's the simplest one of these recipes? Here it goes. Two in, two out. Uh, and I think it just flips whether it spits out lambda or phi. Phi... Uh, if we use four machines, we can turn phi's into lambdas. So we're not doing that. Those are both the outputs. Which means we need to go from lambda and or phi to zeta and or omega. That's going to get complicated fast. I think we just... Lambda and or phi... To zeta and or omega. But we need the other types for catalysts anyway. And the only loops... The only loops that we've came, come up with... Where the same catalyst keeps getting reused... Uh, are these ones. Where is it? Uh, epsilon to Xi and vice versa. Zeta, Omega, Theta, Gamma, and Lambda Phi. Basically the Theta becomes a Omega, becomes a Phi, I think. Uh, and becomes a theta again. Oh, sorry, the phi becomes an omega. Yeah, no, that becomes an omega, and then the omega becomes a theta. It goes round and round and round. I don't think we can do similar small-scale stuff. For specific arbitrary arcosphere flips. Which means we really do need 10 of these for each little 
area. I don't like it. I don't like it one little bit. There's also... Lambda Phi... Lambda Xi Zeta. I don't think we can really, like, match up symbiotic relationships between some of these recipes. It doesn't look like it works that way. Like, if we pair them up, we're not going to get much of a natural... What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, I almost want to say, like, confluence or something. Compliment. We're not going to have, like, two of these recipes complement each other that well. So... Maybe we could at least make some small botless builds. It's basically just going to be sushi belt hell. Unless I use like splitters. But then the number of arcospheres that would be sitting on the belts waiting for input would be way too many. I guess, ugh. It's take me, taking us all the way back to using, what was it? Cargo rocket, cargo landing pads. Which we apparently can't place. Oh, I can't place in the editor space, that's why. I'm pretty sure we're allowed to place them on space platform plating. Uh, it would be weird if we couldn't. Um, but yeah, building ten of these around... One big container. I'm pretty sure a six by six is too small. Gotta be, right? Because we can't fit these in. One tail off? Really? Really, really? Yeah, we'll just belt it. We'll just have like... Uh, seven times eight. For each type of arcosphere, just waiting. It really does make sense to use bots here. It'll give you more space around. Longhand inserters? Uh, we'd already be using longhand inserters here. Well, I guess... I don't think this is going to be enough. Surely. It's basically the same problem. Ain't those bigger? Use a landing pad as a big box, yeah. I was hoping I'd be able to design it without those because we can't put the landing pads in the editor space. The landing pads are 9 by 9, right? Cargo L.
So kind of like that. Should be pretty easy to fit ten of these around. Why is there no symmetry? Oh, right. Anyway, that would be something like this, and then those would fit there, no problem. But then... Then we kind of want the, the actual machines doing the work to also fit around those containers, which they don't. So we're straight back to using belts or butts to get them into these machines. Maybe sushi does make sense. That'd actually be kind of cool. Maybe we can make it work. Okay, let's say... Just as a... Template to start from. We have something like this. Where does this go? Oh, over here. We're going to need more space than this, though, I think. And... Oh, we're definitely going to need more space than that. Probably end up using a whole half block for each build. Hmm. It's kind of confusing me trying to design this up upside down. Let's just start over, over here. So we want, uh, what was it? Nequium plate and sig data to come from these two. I would like to line it up. with the input-output for the fluids and stuff to be about the same. Let's just stop with the similarities there. So it's going to be something like... Of course, that wouldn't quite line up. What did we do back here? All the way around like that. Okay. I guess we'll worry about the piping last. Not to say it should be an afterthought. Hmm. If we really only need 10 machines to support this. Okay, maybe we just use the whole half block. Oh, 
Don't worry about how close this is right now. Beacon 2. Uh, can we fit 10 of these, like, here? The flippers don't need any fluids. I'm thinking... We've got so many Arcospheres. And our... Uh, our targets are relatively... Humble, shall we say? Something like that, maybe. But maybe we can just let the input saturate it. How many... How many Arcospheres will be sitting in these inputs? One, two, three, four... Oh, you've actually... Oh, I... I think these will all be the same. Um... Got to change the recipes here. Could you... Blank, please? There we go. Number two, number three, number four... Number... Wait, there's only eight of these. Wait, no, these are nine, ten. Uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So what I just want to double check here. is just how many Arcospheres would have to be sitting in the inputs. Two of each type. This one's only one of each type if the outputs are saturated. So I guess it's going to be at least four Arcospheres sitting in the machines at any one point. How many have we found so far? Arcosphere, all time, 628. Sad, we actually found 652, but we lost a few. To a malicious media. Also, there's like one or two that are sitting in the inputs to be converted to non-generic Arcospheres. One. Three total, one input, one production, one output of each type, yeah. If, uh, if we only, t if we take away one of the outputs, okay, it doesn't get worse. So there's that. But still, I don't love how many inputs that takes. We could do the laborious controlling of Arcosphere inputs so that we don't have as many sitting uselessly. But... Uh, the thing about that is if we're going to do this with a su uh, sushi belt, I think we should keep the inputs saturated and just control the outputs. Why don't we just do these in a line? If we're going to do it like this. Something like that. And something like that. So then we've got our... Negative 275. Input like so. Just move all this down a bit. So the idea is... Hmm, 
let's move that over a bit. Or maybe move this over a bit. Aren't we going to have to count what's on the belt? Kinda. That clip was almost physically painful. Yeah. Yeah, it was. It's very painful. How did I end up... I think it was just push it all to one side, right? Yeah. Something like that. Hmm. It's hard to find a very neat way to do this. That does reach our target though, right? Plus a thousand. Plus seven hundred. Pretty sure we need the high tier modules for this I uh for this number of machines to reach our goal. Yeah we do. Let's just design it for that to start with. Plus 14, plus 7, 1 megawatt each, minus 80. I bet this also does minus 80. It does. Okay. Sit bead modules for you. It's a lot of speed modules. Uh, and we're basically just going to have unconditional input. All of these recipes are still slow enough, right? That. Yeah. An inserter should keep up just fine. Let's do it this way, actually. And then the outputs... I'm tempted to try something a bit simple. We've probably tried it before, actually. Uh, you know what? I kind of want to do it like this. I can't use set filters for these outputs because there's too many arcosphere types for the filter slots. Of course, death would approve of that soul killing clip. Indeed. Turtle, welcome in. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. Are we going to have to have that whole balancer circuit? I think so. I think so. Each less than signal zero. Because signal zero means doing nothing. And this is the value of doing nothing. Okay.
Can we squeeze this in over here somehow? How many is this? 19. Actually, I kind of want to split it by these recipes. Oh, I think these are the ones where we do the direct swaps. We're not even... We're not even using that. We've still got it on the circuit, but we're not using those uh, direct swap recipes from the... Yeah. We're not using the composite recipes at the moment. So that is actually only 11 of these. Only. Connect that up to there. And L. Aim just shows you're alive. Okay, so instead of setting filters, it's got to be recipe zero, recipe one, recipe A, etc. Uh, and then the question of how we should count the arcospheres and the belts. Honestly, I think it's probably better to literally just connect all of this and read belt contents. Continuously. You can make a counter, but... That's just X... I, I, I know the... It's a bit of an eyesore covering the belt in Christmas lights like this, and yellow, whatchamacallit, just everywhere. Um, but it's reliable. You always know what's actually on the belt with this. Um, okay. So, let me just move this down. So we're counting what's on the belt. Uh, what are we... There's like an extra step. Contents of this times negative one. Was that because I programmed these in backward or something? I think it might have been. So like recipe number one, which is this one, I believe. It is. Lambda omega becomes xi theta. Yeah, I think it's because I progress. So like the idea was a negative means we're going to lose that arcosphere. And a positive means we're going to gain one. And I might have programmed these in backward. And then I just kind of multiplied what we have by negative one to fix it. But really what we should be doing is flipping all of these. That's going to be fun. And then we require one fewer combinator. Carpal tunnel, let's go. I should do a copy paste for negative one. So the top ones should be negative.
That way we don't need to multiply everything by negative one. mod that reduces the belt reader graphics clutter. That sounds good. Where tree, welcome in. Okay, done, done. Got like seven more to go or so. Wait, that's right. Negative one. Okay. I need to click each of these once and only once. Negative, negative, positive, positive. Uh, yes. That one's still not correct. Wait. Yeah, no, that's right. Negative at the top, positive at the bottom. Inputs at the top, outputs at the bottom. I think that's all of them. So basically, uh, these adjustments to the input to these combinators are adjustments to the count of arcospheres that we're going to have after executing that recipe. Uh, and then we do... Those go to just the individual combinators. All of them receive the count of what's on the belt. Uh, and we do each to the power of two. And then uh, whatever has the smallest value represents... Why are some of these four and some of these are eight? Oh no, that's correct. Yeah, so the bigger the number uh, that comes out of here, the more, the bigger the error is. As in, our error would be zero if we end up with the exact same number of all eight Arcosphere types. Uh, whichever, ha any recipe that has a smaller error than doing nothing at all uh, is going to be allowed to to run its outputs. I think I'll use red wire here just so that it's a bit more visible. Because the, we've got green wire going up this way. Clean sushi. Nice, nice. Uh, okay, so I believe, I'll just double check this, but yeah, Alpha Omega is what I call recipe one. Yeah. So we're just going to say if uh, signal one is detected, then... I, I, maybe we should do not equal to zero here. 
If signal one detected... Oops. Then output from that machine. Uh, did we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight? I think we did. So two should be gamma and C, which it is. So that is two, three, four, five should be theta epsilon. Yes, it is. Five, six, seven, eight, uh, zeta, theta, gamma, omega is a, oops, a and b. Okay, cool. All right, so theoretically, uh, if we were to put some number of arcospheres on this thing, how about we set up a little, little pseudo-random test? We're going to actually make some arcospheres from the blanks right here. Uh, and toss them, it'll be four and then the other four out of the eight types. This recipe does actually, no? I thought this one flip-flopped reliably. Apparently it's also random. Um... What? We've got one of each right now. So apparently doing nothing is winning. Now we're a little bit imbalanced. But we're still better off doing nothing. It's very difficult to see the arcospheres on the belt here. Oh! Some of the belts are stuck. That might have something to do with it. There they go. All together now. Uh, I guess I could... I could put some little lights here. Nah, it's fine. All right, so we're going to run the recipes unconditionally, uh, and then we're going to be waiting to spit out the outputs based on which recipes we're trying to run right now. And maybe, maybe I did my logic wrong. Or maybe we just picked up literally all the arcospheres. That might have something to do with it. Uh, I may not have left room for what I want to do here. Oh no. So we need... We need input for arcospheres, we need output for arcospheres. Maybe I should do the Naquium plate, etc. on this side, after all. That might actually be okay. And then we don't have to do more awkward stuff with the, uh... Uh, with the piping. I made the belt not quite long enough, unless we do this, which is kind of awkward.
Uh, this should be filtered though, because we're trying to get space dilation data. So output is lambda and phi. I just realized, isn't this pattern not going to work for some of the recipes that have like five or eight arcospheres? I, I guess we could just blacklist, blacklist the solid that we actually want to get out instead. Or we could blacklist like singularity tech card, junk card, and broken card. That'll work. In any case, uh, for this one, we could just do it like this. Um, let's do some nice cheat inputs. And that's going to look like so. Wait, this is an odd number? No. I put that in the wrong place. And now we're just looking for thermofluid. Super cool. Thermofluid. Uh, I guess we could fit these like so. No problem there. And for now, I'll just delete. And then for the actual desired output, uh, I guess we could put a long arm over here. Okay. So, is it going to run at full speed eventually? Is the question I have. I don't see why it shouldn't. One would think... One whole balancer just for one of these builds would be overkill, but maybe it's going to be trying to... F maybe it's going to be forcing one particular flip or set of flips, like one particular sequence of flips over and over again. It's going to struggle to keep up. Trying to make Zetas. No? That was Theta. That was Zeta. The thing is, as well, unless I put two output inserters, because the stack size is one, or even if the stack size wasn't one, it's two different materials. Unless I put two, or in this case four, output inserters per machine, uh, sometimes we're going to end up with just one of the outputs sitting here, which means the information, uh, the decision-making to, to decide whether we should tr turn on signal six uh, is not necessarily going to be as accurate because... It's kind of like if this recipe spat out two gammas and one epsilon just once. Not to mention that we don't have any zetas right now. Need filtered output too? Uh, 
Oh, over here? Are we killing the Arcospheres? We are. Oops. Good thing we're spamming in new ones. So that is space dilation data. Okay. Is this really about as small as I can make it? I, I guess we... Uh, I was going to say we could, like, have the belt on this side, but then what happens to these guys? So this is only ever going to output lambdas and or phis. Are some of these machines going to be, like, products finished zero? Not as far as our testing is concerned here, but that might just be because we didn't start with a bunch of Arcospheres to begin with. We're really not seeing these machines active very much. At all. There's constantly at least one type of arcosphere that's not present. See, this is why I want to do custom balances for the different recipes, right? Because we want to spit out as many Zetas and Omegas as possible. But... Turning an arbitrary number of Lambdas and Phi's back into 50-50 Zetas and Omegas... Um... That's... That's looking a little bit complicated, to say the least. This one that spits out Omega doesn't even take Lambda or Phi. This one takes Lambda and Omega. That's like... completely backward or upside down from what we want. I'm really getting tempted to... to try some Arcosphere balances based on Arcolink, uh, Arcolink, uh, Arcolink storages. We can only fit 10. Hmm. What if we have all of our balances, wherever they are, pointing at the same channel what is this? You're just gonna change back? What? What does this even mean? Why does it just say four no matter what I do? I thought... I thought we figured these were all binary so that we could have a bunch of different Arcosphere channels, but it just keeps wanting to change itself. Linked to surface? What? The links of the container depend on the surface it's first placed on. Okay. So unless we do, so we, so these aren't changeable, really. And unless we do some spaceship shenanigans, 
What is even the point of this display? Uh, presumably unless we do some spaceship shenanigans. Uh, they're all just going to be the same on the one surface. So we can't have different Arcosphere channels on the same surface. Hmm. Well, my idea was, what if... Oh god, that's going to be... They're, they're pretty expensive, right? Arco link chest. Uh, Arco link chest. Link, there we go. Ten Arco spheres? Bruh. That's kind of rough. It might be worth it, though. I think we're going to need a bunch of these, is the thing. Like, quite a few of them, for what I have in mind. We've only got about 628 Arcospheres. Only. So the idea is... I don't think we can fit more than four of these. around one of these machines. Not even with some shenanigans. That obviously is too... Well, that's not too far. That is. Okay. Let's just see what we can fit comfortably, without maybe thinking about belts or something. We could definitely do four. I wish it was more. Also, I hate that these are two by two. Because I kind of wanted to do the simultaneous output of all of these. You, uh, you can only, if you move the chest from surface to surface using a ship. Okay. I was thinking perhaps... We could simply have circuitry that would ensure that we've got exactly one of each Arcosphere type in the chest at any one time. That's not going to work. Hmm. I don't think it's going to work to use literally just the Arcosphere chest like this. So, so... You can kind of see where this is going, right? The idea is... With some circuitry and setting filters and stuff... Um, with different Argosphere folding recipes... Uh, we control the... Output from the machines back to the Argosphere... Uh, the Argo link storage. But if we have two recipes that want to output Theta at the exact same time and we've got like no slack you know we're trying to have one of each Arcosphere type in here at the same time and 
we have even a little bit of over insertion, then we're going to have some problems. So we'd probably have to have a big Arco link storage, uh, a big container linked to the Arco link storage, right? And then we'd have to be transmitting what's actually in here to wherever the balances are. I guess we could do all the balances in one place and we wouldn't even need to transmit. We'd just like have circuit wire. So basically we have something like this logic. Uh, deciding what recipes we're running. And then we have the balances here. Uh... Maybe it's better if the balances are directly next to the big storage container. And we only have the one thing here trying to maintain exactly one of each Argosphere type in the chest. The Arco link chests, the storage, uh, Arco link storage chests are so expensive. I was, um, I was kind of thinking each build could directly take Arco spheres in and out like this. But that's way too many Arco spheres, right? Like, what are we going to have? Um, 12, 24, uh, plus 8. 32, plus like 6, 7, 8, 9. So 40-ish Arco link chests. Just for direct swapping of the Arco spheres. With the actual builds that consume them. Time to launch more collectors. Can you read it? Uh, only if you move the chest from surface to surface, can you read it? Can you read the Arcolink chest? Yes, you can. The Arcolink chest itself, uh, the problem is it's only got 10 slots of storage. That makes it a little trickier. Even the lag time of moving an Arcosphere from like a warehouse or a cargo landing pad into the Arco link storage could be a little bit of a problem. But maybe not considering how slow all of these uh, recipes that actually need the Arco, the Arcos actually are. Uh, but the nice thing about this is, well, for one thing, there's no bot back and forth, right? There's no delay with bots flying Arcospheres around all over the place. But, like, if all of, if all of this was linked to an Arco link chest, and all of these consumers were directly linked to Arco link chests, or very very closely linked. Um, we could pretty much eliminate the flight time of the bots. Not to mention, you know, if we need to scale up the balancing, we can just copy-paste it, pretty much.
I'm just a little bit worried that it'll, it'll actually take so many Arculate chests that... That we'd actually kind of run out somewhat. We were talking in the vicinity of like 40. Like we could obviously put like one Arco Link chest between two, two or maybe four even. Four would be a bit trickier. Uh, anyway, we could share Arco Link chests between at least a couple of grab facilities. Um, but that's still like 200 or so. Uh, Arcos to make the Arco links that we need to try this out. I'm using Arco link to replace long trip ship from core mining or Naquium, but this usage is quite interesting. Yeah, I'm seriously considering doing that actually. I like, I kind of said that uh, I wouldn't do it. Yeah. It, it's almost cheating, but like. I mean, it's a pain to set up anyway. But I, it, it kind of, like, solves the game for logistics from getting stuff from other planets, right? Especially because we can use loaders with this mod set. We can just do loaders straight in and out of the Arculink chests. So that's like, uh, if we've if we've got output only on this end... Uh, that is 8 times 90. 720 items per second. <laughs> it doesn't matter that it's only got 10 stacks. Um, but yeah, we'd need what? Probably... 20 Arco Spheres for each outpost? Question mark? I might... Obviously we'd want to redesign the uh, drop-offs since there'd be no spaceships. I don't know if we'd want to cram like twice as many uh, pulverizers in one spot. Because I, I don't think we can't like get an Arcosphere chest on Verb T uh, and one on Orpheus and one on Plato and bring them all back and like have them connect to the same channel, right? So each outpost would have it would have to have its own Arco Link chest back here uh, that that it gets teleported back to. We still need to send supply to the mining outpost. Uh, so ships are still used for space elevator cable or train fuel. Yeah, that's pretty trivial though. Like, that's nothing compared to the throughput that we need to actually bring the core frags back. We've already got a system um, that resupplies the outposts using the same ships that... Uh, that bring the core frags back. So redesigning one that just supplies them uh, is pretty trivial compared to that. Once this gets a job, there it goes. Ten space elevator cables are going to... Uh, Esther Orbit. But yeah, yeah. I, I originally didn't really want to do the interstellar Arco chest things. It felt like a bit of a cheat, but like, it is so difficult to bring back this many core frags. I mean, they literally, I think it was stack size 100 last time we played, last playthrough. They, they nerfed it into oblivion. Uh, and I looked at that and said, challenge accepted anyway. Maybe if I could design literally the perfect ship dispatch system, um, 
the amount that we've already got would be more than enough. But it's really, really difficult to bring that many back. Uh, anyway, back to spitballing. Oops. Arco link chest, Arco folding ideas. So if we do the old build 10 of these around, oops, build 10 of these around a cargo landing pad. The biggest container that we've got access to. Oops. That'll do. This is going to look something like this. Uh, I guess we need to move these out a bit. Because we don't have room for the Arco Link at this rate. See, we do this. Um, I guess we could smuggle. I hate that this is not going to be symmetrical. But I guess we could smuggle an Arco Link chest in like this. And we'd need some fancy circuitry to. Set filters on these. It's basically going to say... Okay. Hold on. We want all types of Arcos here. I don't think it's going to be as simple as this. Surely not. Set filters, whitelist. Uh, set filters, blacklist won't work here because there's only four filter slots. We need eight. So we take the contents, oh, let's put in one of each, what, oh you stole them from us, rude. Okay, I hope that's all of them. Put these in as a little test. Where are they going? Arco link storage. Oh, over here. Also, no. Okay. Once more with feeling. But one of each arc is... God damn it. But one 
of each Arku in here. Okay, cool. Uh, and we want anything that's greater than two. I guess we're, surely we're going to need some combinators here. Anything greater than two. Output. Or each greater than two. Either way. Uh, that's what we're going to want to remove. And we can't exactly say anything equal to zero. Oh, how about this greater than one? Negative one for all these. Hope they come up with a better UI for things like this. Not sure what that would look like. Okay, so these are all negative one. Uh, if I guess this is going to be greater than zero. For each greater than zero, remove it. So if anything that's not supposed to be in there gets in there, it'll be removed. Um, if we end up with duplicates, they'll be removed. And as for what we're trying to put in there... Uh, it's going to be any signal that's less than one. But negative signals don't trigger... Don't trigger a filter. So I guess we can just change that offset a little bit. Maybe it should have been one after all. I think we do need two decider combinators for this. I don't see how we can pair it down. Okay. So that's going to be... Same, same, but... Wait, what? Why did you... Alright. Uh, each greater than two. I'll put each. And each equal to one. In other words, there's nothing in there. Wait, what? Yeah, there's no theta in there. So it's spitting out a signal of 1 for this. Our fake count is 2, because we can't check a 0 number. So that's gonna... That's gonna try and put in a theta. And that's it. So then, if we just remove all of these... I don't have, I don't love how m long it takes to do all those swings. Like the superior filter can insert a can swing three point six times per second. I just hope that's going to be enough to keep up with everything. Also, come to think of it, if we do. Uh, Okay, so basically this is going to be attached to uh, one of these big balances, right? But if we have two of these wanting to do everything faster in parallel, wouldn't it be possible that we insert two lambdas at exactly the same time? And then we remove two lambdas at the exact same time, and then it's going to loop. 
I think that seems quite likely. So unless we somehow arbitrarily put these two out of sync or something... I don't see how that's going to work. Like, imagine if we had slower inserters on one of these. Um, it takes one tick for an inserter to take something from a chest or a machine. So even a yellow inserter would grab it just as quickly as the superior fil uh, the superior inserter. For the start of the swing, at least. So, I don't think this is going to work. The belt corners look a bit off. Yeah, the point of this is just to show where a cargo, a cargo landing pad would fit. Because we can't place it in the editor space. Arcospheres are the worst. How many do we have here now? Okay, that may be a few too many. Uh, in fact, the belt is actually backed up. Okay, can, can we maybe... Maybe calm down a little bit? That's still like a few hundred... <laughs> Okay, so there's way more than enough Arcospheres here to saturate all the inputs to all the machines. Uh, and we're still probably only going to see like one or two of these running at any given time, I think. Yeah, I... I don't know how we're going to get smooth, continuous production of everything that requires arcospheres. I really don't. Because this was supposed to be the easy way. Like, what are we going to do? Just double down on two of the recipes each that produce more Zetas and Omegas, maybe? But I keep seeing uh, the B recipe running quite often. That produces both. That's the... S the, A the A and B recipes are the slowest ones. That really doesn't help. It's the puzzle boss, indeed. Arcospheres are the worst. So in this case, at least, Zeta Omega into Lambda Phi asterisk, because it's random, it's not... It doesn't spit out Lambda Phi 50-50. Um... If we pretend it does, though, running this inversion recipe continuously, uh, and then we get a bunch of thetas and omegas that we have to deal with, and we also have to keep feeding it xi and epsilon. It's too much, man. Getting Arcospheres just to work is not that difficult, but getting any kind of serious, reliable throughput is just a nightmare. I 
it does seem like we're just continuously running this recipe and everything else is just kind of supporting it. Are we going to end up doing some trial and error shit? Where we just go, okay, we're obviously never running in version A, so we'll swap that one out for a double in version B. Right. And then just see how that goes and see what else changes. doesn't seem like we're really getting any... We're not really getting significantly faster with our space dilation data. Do we actually need three per second for the data cards? Let's see. Wormhole teleportation reality hypergraph. Interstellar. Here it is. Space dilation, folding, injection, warping. So it's actually tier three that needs all the arcosphere stuff. Not tier four. God. Deep Space Science 3 is so much more demanding in so many ways than Deep Space Science 4. And the Tesseracts require Arcosphere Folding as well. So five, five different Arcosphere Folding recipes just to support Deep Space 3. And then Deep Space 3 supports this. Not to mention... Okay, this is where Arcospheres have to support Deep Space 4. The, uh... Naquim processes themselves. I have to say, we never seem to struggle with the Arcospheres for Naquim processes, though. So it's really just bottlenecked on the Tesseracts. There's a relatively large amount of activity here at the moment. I've never actually seen the uh, Singularity tech cards running so smoothly, I don't think. God, at this rate, I just feel like spamming bots faster and faster, and to hell with it. Like, just keep researching bot robot speed. Until they move fast enough to keep up with all this. And cram in a few more balances if necessary. Did you collect all of them? Uh, the Arcospheres? Yes. But it... I don't think we've been to any of the locations that give you a few free ones. Uh, this run. There's like no activity here. It's so bad. Do Arcospheres get destroyed if bots crash? Or could you just add more bots? Uh, no, they don't. Bots don't destroy stuff that they're carrying if they crash. They just drop it on the ground with it automatically marked 
to be picked up like uh like this are you using less than 50 bots even on arcosphere building uh we're using 50 exactly 50 oh apparently we only need half of them at the moment which is a bit surprising but as you can see from how backed up this is, uh, we're hardly we're hardly running all of the Arcosphere machines at the moment. How much more research do we need for this? Like thirty five thousand, closer to ten thousand, because productivity bonus here almost triples what we actually get out of it. Okay. This is even harder than I thought it would be. The fact... The fact that the recipe outputs are actually random is really kind of upsetting. If this always sped out... Okay, this is a less difficult example, because we could just build so that it converts the lambdas and the phis. But the number of steps it would take to convert, like... phi into omega or zeta, lambda into omega or zeta... Even if, if it was perfectly balanced all the time, I'm sure we could figure out some chain similar but more complex, probably more machines, to what we did before, whereby we swap two Arcospheres for two Arcospheres. Basically just wanted to do this, but built to support a specific build but it's way too complex and random like we're gonna end up with so like even if we do it and we figure it all out we figure out the chain that gets us from here back to here we're still gonna end up with like several grab facilities right so the ones that take in lambda Are these three? It was Lambda Phi, right? This also takes in Phi. The two that take in Phi. Other than the middle one. Are here. So then we're stuck with Theta C. Don't need those. Uh, we do need a Zeta, we don't need an Epsilon, so then we're stuck with an Epsilon. Epsilon goes in here, so that helps, question mark? I mean, it should. But we're never going to have that exact ratio, because these flip randomly. Basically, reverse conversion of any recipe that needs Argospheres. Yeah, that was the idea. If only it was reliable. Okay, so like let's let's paint this out a bit. Um passive provider can kind of show us that this is what we need. Uh, what was it? Epsilon? We'd probably actually need some storage for this. 
We should probably just use a small bot network for this anyway, instead of belts. Uh, don't know where we're going to get an Omega from. Don't know where we're going to get a Theta from. What about flipping all Arcospheres into the same Arcosphere? And then spread them evenly. Uh, it doesn't really work like that. There are eight recipes shaped like this. Uh, with some arbitrary pairings for input and output. And then there's two recipes. There's this one and the exact reverse of it that are very slow. Uh, that swap four for the other four. So trying to... Trying to chart out how to get from a certain Arcosphere to a certain other Arcosphere uh, can kind of end up looking like that conspiracy wall meme. Finding a chain is hard. I tried. Yeah. It's... I don't think it's going to work out, to be honest. Zeta... Uh, Zeta is the input we want. Zeta is the input we want. So we're probably not doing this one. What was the other input? Oh, Omega is an input. Well, we're definitely not doing this one, right? Uh, does that kind of narrow it down? So all of a sudden we're looking for Thetas and Gammas. Um, and we're gonna, we're gonna get epsilons as byproducts, but we might want to put those in here anyway. Uh, we do want the omega out of this, and then we have the C as a byproduct. Are we going to end up with the same shape if we look at an, one of the other, like, two in, two out, easy, one of these recipes? Now, I'm sure that this isn't enough, because... Like, let's say, for a little while, it runs it so that it spits out nothing but lambdas, right? Uh, lamb, and, and never mind where we're going to get the thetas from. Or the gammas. Uh, lambdas are going to turn into zetas. Uh, and then we're just not going to end up with enough omegas, right? Because it's the recipe, except for the middle one, it's the recipe that spits out uh, phi that ends up getting us omegas. So if it ends up favoring one side lots and lots, even if it's only for a, a, a while, what do we do with that? And where are we continuously getting these uh, gammas and thetas from? Theta xi, then we end up with too many xi. Theta phi. Phi is one of our inputs up here, right? No, it's one of the outputs. I just keep coming back to, no, you have to rebalance everything. But like, have any of these machines just not run at all for a while? I have my doubts. I used the brain to simulate chain recipes, indeed, and it was still too hard. 
Dilko, welcome in. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. Alright, I think I'm going to need a break here anyway. Uh, time to hydrate, grab a snack, cool off a little bit. And preemptive words on stream cheer from Veldak. I guess we'll indulge him. Damsel, welcome in. Hope you're doing well. No breaks, I just got here. I'm going to melt. Is that what you want? Is it really? Okay, okay, I guess not. Words all time, indeed. Alright, uh, we'll start some words on stream in about... Wait, let me just double check, I got the right... Yeah, I think I did. We'll start some words on stream in about 30 seconds. I'll be back in a few minutes. Good luck, have fun, and I'll see you soon.
I'm actually really surprised how imbalanced the cryonite is. Uh, cryonite is here. We've been consuming way more of it on the side closer to the bots with this build. Hmm. Might need to revisit that at some point. Alright, we're done with words on stream for the moment. Fantastic. Let's continue with space exploration. I think I may have forgotten to... No. I was going to say forgot to name one of the ships, but I didn't actually remember to finish building it. So that helps. Port Enghola 57. I dubbed the... And, uh, why do we have no antimatter en engines? Because we have no ion engines. Why do we have no ion engines? Where's the bottle of champagne hitting the ship? Uh... Mod that in. Why do we... Why are we not making ion engines? Shouldn't that come first? Before the... The antimatter engines? With the order... Of the signals? What? 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 Why are you like this? There actually are five ion engines somewhere. So why are they not here? Hello? Wait, there's no way there's no request for an ion engine, right? No, there is. Ion engine... Here it is. So... so what's the problem? Are they in a buffer chest that isn't being pulled from? That's what I was thinking, but I don't see why they should be. What are you doing here? Oh my god. There isn't even a request for it. Bruh. Welp. I guess that'll get it sorted. There was space available? Nah, it wouldn't put something randomly in a buffer chest. Okay, there we go. Oh, there's actually no... Um, there's no power for this pump except for when there's a ship here getting made. All right, what should we do next? We've basically given up on Arcospheres for the moment. Why don't we finish deconning this stuff as a bit of a palate cleanser? I knew, I knew the Arcospheres would be difficult, but I didn't quite expect it to be that traumatic. Apparently we've got a significant amount of downtime for our ships, and yet we're short on Holmium when we're not picking up all the Holmium core franks. Corinna? 
Thank you very much for the seven months. Very much appreciated. Thank you. And welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. Hope you're having a good time today. Maybe I should just make another drop off. Uh, I'm pretty sure we're not keeping our three Holmium drop-offs saturated. 297.6 core frags per second. Uh, 17 point... almost 18k per minute. Core frag... Whole midnight consumption last hour. It's like fifteen K per minute most of the time. So we're already not using these to the fullest. I don't understand how we're never peaking at almost 18k per minute, though. Uh, you know what I do understand, though, is that we should probably... How much of this is here? Uh, we should probably grab whatever prod modules we've got. 28. And finish. Oh, oh, we've got more than a stack. Yes, please. Send you upstairs. Uh, why don't we go and add more prod nines? It's it's always the middle one that stops sometimes for some reason. Uh, I think we'll add prod nines over here. Uh, that's. Just 48, a little bit less than one stack of prod nines. And then we'll be getting significantly more holmium. Uh, it's a jump from 56% productivity bonus to 80 at the first step. So even if these ones are still prod six, that will multiply out to significantly more holmonite. Come to think of it, our max rate here is 190 Holmanite per second. I don't think we've got... We do have some speeds and efficiencies here. I probably already thought of this. Um, let's see. Holmanite only, plus 37 per second. 190 over 152. Uh, if we just have the tier 6s, it can only consume 110 per second. So speed-wise, almost half of this would go to waste. That is, of course, assuming that we could keep the input uh, satisfied at all times, which we can't at the moment, which is why prod bonuses are so valuable. Do we have room to grab more of this? I guess so. I'm definitely going to run out if I try and pick up all this floor. Yeah, just put put the stone back on the ground, why not? And a yoink. Spider space? Oh true. Yeah, I think we can manage.
Good point. Hello there, Post Bank. Welcome in. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again here today. The factory must grow, which is why we shrink the factory. Yes. Uh, yes it is. It reminds me a little bit of packing everything up at the end of Universal Paperclips. Uh, let me guess. Our ro a couple of our robot... Three of our four personal robot ports have run out of energy. Universal Paperclips is a fun game. It's definitely an interesting game. Depending on what you have in mind for fun... Uh, that might not be the impression you get. Also, the second time I played it, I definitely misremembered how long it took. I thought I'd smash it out in a few hours or something. It's more like... a long afternoon or most of a day or something. In order to gain something of equal value must be lost. We reduce factory here to grow factory there. Such is Ouroboros of Factorio. <laughs> Indeed. It's also one of my favorite cards from the Packmaster mod. The Slay the Spire. Once per turn, if you fully block an attack, even if it's just the first of a multi-hit, gain one strength. Alright, let's go back. Don't walk over any spaceships. Empty the spooder. And I've already forgotten what we were going to do next. Uh, is this empty? No, not for a long time. Oh, that's right. We were going to go prod the... Uh, prod and speed up the second block. Or oh, whole meme. Can we actually finish it off? No, we've got like... We're gonna have a little bit more than one stack of prod nines. And we need 48 for one of those core fragment processing blocks. But considering Holmanite is our biggest problem as far as initial material input goes. Um, I think it's a wise investment. That reminds me, plastic. We were going to decommish the old plastic build up here. And... I might just put in some top tier modules here because I'm pretty sure it's literally all we ever need. But then again, like, coal and petroleum is not exactly expensive. Then again, the sheer volume of plastic that we go through is not nothing. And we do have spaceships bringing back coal core fragments. So we could maybe cut down on that a little bit. 
Oh, we still haven't got rid of this. How's our battery? Almost full. Our plastic usage crashed. Uh, it's not because we created a shortage, is it? Oh, it probably is. You know what? I'm just going to double this. I, I don't really... I don't think it's worth putting tier 9 modules in, even if we don't need very many. Uh, not until we could put tier 9 modules literally everywhere. wait till I put the actual building in there. Or I could just do th this. Is that right? I think it is. Let's head over there. Uh, plastic production, I think it was a flat line at the moment. Yeah. Perfectly flat line. Hmm. Maybe it'll take more than two of these, actually, to support our plastic, considering all the area under the graph there. We'll just see how this goes for a what why do I not have large storage tanks I guess we'll involve the construction train here more speed modules yeah I'm a little bit tempted I mean this we're getting the speed and efficiency modules faster than especially the efficiencies faster than prods, but certain builds like uh, blank data cards would cost a lot of speed modules to get up to where we want it to be. And plastic just isn't that important for the prod bonuses. Uh, where else is that wire going? Nowhere. It looks kind of weird, actually. Alright. And... Up there. Fantastic. That'll do. And we've already got six trains on the way to this stop. Or at least stops with this name. But this one apparently doesn't have any trains coming. Alright, we'll see how that goes. And if there's still a bottleneck, I'll put better modules in. Um, but I do think I want to get rid of this build. Still a bunch of petroleum here. Why don't we turn this into a provider? How much is here? About 14k times 3. 40,000. And once 
once the train is scheduled, we'll just set it to have inactivity as well. To make sure it gets rid of whatever's left of the petroleum here. Why are there two coming? You're headed back. Here it is. Wait for inactivity also. There we go. I guess there's also some coal here. No, I think we... We must have run out of the coal because there was some petroleum left. Uh, and we're going to want to get rid of this plastic too. How much is here? 60 something stacks. Hold on, do we only need long trains? For plastic? There we go. Um, I suspect the answer is yes. Plastic. Ingredient. Uh, long trains. Long train. Long train. Long trains. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we don't need no stinking short trains for plastic. So I think I want to make a slight change to that other build. Then we can have more storage space. At least a bigger, uh, bigger beacon for more modules. Uh, the wide beacon 2s are just barely faster than the compact beacons. Uh, well, I think that's more... If you if you just fill it with speeds, if you want to be that kind of player, um, I don't think it makes a difference. But... Since this would fit conveniently, I guess we can do that. Alright. It'll be the same number of modules. Oop. And that's the end of that old build. I'm pretty sure I built it ratioed for... T9 modules. But after looking at the rate of consumption of plastic. Uh, if we go tier 9 here, then this is all we're ever going to need. It's not exactly going to be balanced if I put the two loaders here, right? Oops. Plus 700, plus 460, plus 160, minus 80. Cool, cool, cool. Not even faster, uh, even if faster. At least a bigger beacon for more modules. Yeah, but it's a different uh, efficiency. The uh, compact beacon 2 has a distribution efficiency of 1.0. So it's the same as if you put it in the machine directly. Uh, speed plus 70% means speed plus 70% as opposed to 35%. It takes twice as many modules to fill a wide beacon 2 as a small one. But if you want to do the thing where you put in just enough efficiencies to get negative 80% power consumption, which gives you almost the, like, let, let's just all check here. Crafting speed 27.6 at the moment. If I put all speed sixes in, 
it, at 52.8. Okay, it's a little bit different. At, at tier 6 modules, I guess. Um, I'm pretty sure with the... Uh, in, in different instances, you get a minimal change. Like, not even worth talking about in the crafting speed for all of that power. Anyway, that is still 27.6. How fast is this? 86.112. Almost a full purple belt. Um, here's the thing. If I just duplicate this and unlimit this, I think it's going to end up being imbalanced. Because it's not like the loaders take turns, do they? If they are inserters in a trench coat, they should take turns, I think. Ever since, um... Ever since they patched it so that in vanilla, if you have, like, two or more inserters coming off a machine that are too fast for the machine, they will take turns. No, it's all... Uh, it actually looks like it is balanced. Huh. I'm pleasantly surprised. Cool. Alright, so unlimit that. And just rebalance that to be sure. They should take turns? Yeah, apparently. Pleasantly surprised. Uh, but yeah, I, I do have my doubts. How fast is this? 172 per second. 10.3k per minute. I'm pretty sure that actually is enough. For a while. Last 10 hours, we consumed 11k per minute. God damn it. I'm beginning to think that this is not actually enough. Oh, okay, priorities. If we've got some left over, maybe, because it's just eight prod modules, uh, maybe I'll max this out and see if it's enough. I do like this build. I, I just hope we don't have to scale up beyond this because I don't really want to have multiple instances of a wide beacon supporting only two machines like this. I guess we could, like... Eh. I don't like the shape of this if we do more than one machine. Okay, where are my where are my modules? I think they're down this way. You could do four machines with that beacon, yeah, but it'd look pretty awkward. Why have our modules not come downstairs yet? Because we're still waiting on the beacon twos. Alright, this'll do. I'm a little disturbed by the fact we're still waiting on Beacon 2s. Let me guess. We've got... Wide Area Beacon... In a buffer chest or something. Yep. It's not even supposed to be here. We stopped... I'm pretty sure we stopped putting Wide Beacon Tier 1 in the train a while ago. Yeah, we did. Okay. Well, 
Wide area beacon. Now we can't. Wait, no, don't get rid of the buffer. The active provider. So two machines with two input stations filling out one station. Two machines with two input stations. Uh, well, things can get weird with uh, input balancing if we don't have, uh, so kind of like this, right? But we ended up putting in this weird circular belt thing. Uh, things can get a bit weird with the balancing if we don't make it so that, for example, we have this one machine taking from both sides. Anyway, we're getting super, super sidetracked. Give me those modules. And finally, let's go update. But let's not walk over the spaceships. Let's go update these prod modules for Holmium. Uh, I should probably make another... How do I, how do I make a new one? Do, do we just save? Like this? No, yeah, there we go. Okay, pulverizer, tier nine prod. Ta-da. And I want to double check the ratio. I guess we'll be changing it all the time anyway. For different builds. Uh, 13, 6, negative 80. So 7 efficiencies. I'm pretty sure that's what we had over here. Fantastic. All right, uh, and we have, ouch, only five prod nines left. We've actually got quite a lot of speed modules, almost one stack. I'm tempted to go place them in blank data cards, but I think it needs like 60 for one quarter block here. Also, never mind, we're actually... Materially bottlenecked. Advanced circuit, really? Um, what's going on with advanced circuit? Oh. If I don't make a duplicate of this, we're bottlenecked on 180 advanced circuits per second coming up the elevator. And this requires 100. But I wonder if... We're not making enough advanced circuits. Oh no. We're not making enough electronic components, apparently? Yeah, it's... it's electronic components. Where are we making those? Everything completely new except you using same output station and same beacon. Yeah, because we built it to fit these modules in the first place so that we have an easy upgrade path. All right. Uh, let's figure out where the heck we're making... Oh, nope, I see them. Are we just not doing this fast enough? We're short on lithium. Mm. What? Uh, I know how this happened. Is that our only lithium build? Product. No, there's two of them. 
And they're both jammed in the same... No, they're not. Why do we change this one? Probably because I didn't want the train stops. Pro yeah, probably because the rate that this is capable of got a bit fast. 1.5 stacks per second. So what, we just wanted to have... I, I don't know what I was thinking here. Wanted to have more room for train throughput, I guess. But in any case, uh, the problem we've got over here, it only happens with loaders. Uh, when we do belt upgrade planners, um, sometimes the loaders, when they get swapped out by the bots, basically just like fall onto the belt. And get pushed all the way into a train. That said, we've got loads of lithium here. And if this, if, if this had happened over here, it would make sense that we have a lithium shortage. But it doesn't. Are we out of trains? I think we probably don't have enough trains. I'm not seeing any LTN warnings that we don't have enough trains, though. Heat tree Cottontail, welcome in. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. And Ohio Soro, welcome in also. With the modules, goes for negative 80% power consumption, yes. You can get, uh, you can still get the machines to go many times faster than normal without paying ludicrous amounts of power for it. Your power plants have to, have to exist somewhere. They're not free. Um, yeah, it looks, okay, how much? 7k. Is this fast enough? We've only got two builds like this, right? Uh, what's it called again? Electronic components. Yeah, we do. Okay, so we're capable of 145 per second. And the max rate... Never mind the ratios. At a glance, the max rate would be... Only 93 per second. But, so what's the problem? We'd be positive on electronic components. They're not going up the elevator, are they? They are. Where do we consume... electronic components up here? Trains? Uh, solar panels. And apparently that's it. I don't think we've been making a lot of solar panels lately. Not for a long time, actually. So, what is going on with our electronic components? Okay, what's the max rate again? Per minute... 8.7k, apparently. Compo... Last hour... Is only 2.7k. Modules need them, though? Oh... That'd be it. That would be it. And elect a, a red circuits as well. Yeah, these... 
So the tier 1 modules want 8, 10, and 5, respectively. Uh, and we need two of these to make 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 two of these. You get the idea. Uh, two to the power of nine, is it? Uh, how do I do to the power of in this calculator? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Five hundred and twelve times ten for the productivity modules. Five thousand two hundred. Oh, yeah. Okay. So half a train load of electronic components to make one prod nine. Um. That's a little bit expensive. Just a tad. Two times times eight. Nope. Time for more faster? Maybe. And I just want to check on the LTM trains. No, they're chilling. The fact that we can find even one that's sitting in the depot that's not immediately going to do something tells us we're fine. That syntax usually works on simple calculators. Well, this one's different. I can't remember what it was. Uh, we actually found an instance where this calculator will lie to you. Um, it was just like a rounding error, basically. It wasn't a big deal. But if you're super, super, super serious about precision, maybe don't use this one. Windows calc can't go do times times either. I don't know why I set up the output stations like this. It's kind of weird. In any case, we already did upgrade our lithium builds to tier 9 modules, and we've got more than enough of them. Which makes me really curious as, like, despite that we had that one train that was blocked, uh, it was blocked over here, so we still had a train stop per block for trains to be able to pith pick up lithium. And we ended up letting this run out. It's a bit surprising. With four solids for input, uh, we could set all of these to 1.5 train loads. If we want to. This is 11, uh, 110 stacks. Uh, this is... 120 stacks. I think all of these are... 120 as well. In any case, we should have calculated it so that there's plenty of time for a train to get here before we run out of whichever resource. So, right now we're low in silicon, but there's a silicon train coming. It's almost here. Yeah, I don't know. I actually don't know how we ended up with a electronic components shortage. Well, I guess some of these... Uh, it would have only been one station, though. Was requesting electronic components, and that train in particular was stuck for a long time. Yeah, I don't know about that one. All 
Alright, so now what? Now that we've set ourselves up to get more productivity bonus out of most of our Holmium, I think I'd like to upgrade this next. Even though it spends an amount of time empty. Actually, I guess the... For some reason, the ships like this one in the middle least. I think it's going to spend more... It's going to have more downtime now because the other two are faster. Uh, we should probably add another ship. Keep going until we're sure that that's not the bottleneck. Probably runs into some type of 10-digit floating point rounding errors that a lot of cal uh, calculators do when multiplying large numbers by small numbers. Uh, it wasn't a super big number. I, I can't remember what it was, but it was not that many digits. Hey. Hey, Solovix, thank you so much for the, uh, words. Thank you very much for the Prime sub for six months. Very much appreciated. Thank you. And a welcome in. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. Pardon my brain turning to mush. Or egg holler 50 something. We're up to 58. I just want to keep slowly adding ships until we stop seeing a material. Wait, what? We're still struggling on the antimatter engines for some reason. It's ion engines again. What's going on? They're not here, are they? No? Storage. There's nothing. So there's just too many other things that we're trying to craft right now? Okay, where are the rocket engines? That's probably... yep. 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 I should just deke on these chests. The exact same reason that we got stuck on making antimatter engines earlier. Got to keep an eye on your iron engines. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah, but it was actually the rocket engines this time. But for the exact uh, exact same reason. Okay. Shouldn't take too long to get like three antimatter engines now. I don't need to, like, click this anyway. It'll automatically do an integrity check before it tries... when it tries to launch. Uh, but yeah, that's number 58. Don't have a rock-solid pun for rocket engines? Mm-hmm. 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 Okay. I kind of want to redo Coverex. Okay, what are we trying to do on this build? Uranium ore in, two types of uranium out, and we can do matter out for excess uranium 238. Uh, also, an LTN stop. We don't necessarily have to do it this way. But it supplies steel plate 
Or rather, it supplies uranium fuel cells and requests steel plate. I think we could tidy this up a bit. More to the point. How much do we even need? Last 10 hours, only 30 per minute. 20 per minute. Okay, this was like 70 per minute over the last hour, but that was kind of a spike. So if we can do like 100 per minute, then that's overkill, right? Uh, That's actually only 141. I thought it was a huge number at first, but the net rate is only 141. So this is actually pretty reasonable um, compared to our needs right now. 32 centrifuges. I'm pretty sure the rate... Yeah, the rate of uranium-235 from this is pretty negligible. Good, good, let the puns consume chat. Oh no. Solid rocket fuel. Oh no. Um... How fast do we actually need to be able to eat the uranium ore? Probably end up doing the same thing on this side anyway. It's really just the cover X. Because cause uh, after redoing the uh, enriched vulcanite, I feel like we really don't need this many swap chests and... This many little circuits. So I kind of want to try refactoring that much. This thing's been running for ages now and we still see zero to one to two machines active at a time. The ones we actually care about. Okay. Hurry up. There we go. Uh, let's just put this back. Wait, wrong thing. I wonder if I can fit it in the same space. Maybe I'll just leave all the train stops and stuff intact. I don't, I don't know if it's even worth the trouble now, to be honest, because we know we need about the same number of machines anyway. And if I'm not going to redo the whole thing, we're going to end... We're, we're just going to have the same confusing spaghetti belts. Still, uh, I kind of want to know if... What's this input belt for? Is it both types? Is both types. Hmm. Let's compare it. Uh, three inputs, three outputs. One of these is junk. Both of these get recycled. As opposed to two inputs, two outputs, one of them's junk. So this is just simpler, right? But if we use the same layout, we can't fit as many machines. Oh, actually, maybe we can. That's 24, right? And that's 32. Okay, this build does have the advantage of being more compact. So the thought was... Uh, basically just to use splitters with priority. To handle the... 
Uranium-235 Io. Ruru. Philip B, welcome in. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. Uh, just like that. Oh, I guess the... I guess we don't have any 238 yet. Um, long arm would unfortunately not reach across this. I guess technically no. No, we can't put the other input on this belt because that output's going to come out on both sides. So, unless we want to use the vertical space, it would have to be something like, like that. Also, this would have to be filtered for 235 only, because we have stone coming out. The input would have to be on this so this is doing the same thing i just never put the the priorities on here in the same way because crushed is crushed isn't going through and exiting the build anyway so it doesn't actually matter Takes up way too much horizontal space. I was hoping for a more simplified version of this. Because there's fewer inputs and outputs. Uh, we don't need to recycle two of these resources, so we don't need to do this on this side. So it's literally just... U two thirty eight uh, and this would be stone. I do seem to recall we did something clever with this. Oh, right. Yeah, when we were just getting started with uranium and every little bit of 235 was precious and we didn't want to oversaturate the input, uh, instead of counting, we could use a circuit. We could use the stone signal from an output to, uh, to like, reset the circuit. Sending out stone on a long arm inserter on the same side of taking in 238 would save a couple of horizontal tiles. Indeed. Didn't really consider that. It does mean that we'd have to have like a off like an underground or something somewhere at the end. Or the 238 could loop. Oops. Which it's already doing, isn't it? Uh, no? No, this is a dead end. Well, in any case, it's not really worth the trouble. Um, we're not going to reduce our machine count for Overex. 
so I don't really see the need. I, I know there's a mod for it. I do wish the uh, advanced centrifuges were just part of the game, like part of K2 or SE. It's really nice replacing replacing builds where we have a million like three by three machines with significantly fewer, bigger, faster ones. Lebers, welcome in. I'm a little stuck in SEK2. 360 hours in, but my ore patches run out faster than I can manage. Uh, I just avoid ore patches for the most part. Um, it's almost... The space is run almost entirely on core fragments. We do have a mine for methane ice, because the methane that we get from Vitamolange processing is not enough, slash, if we get saturated on, uh, Vitam Lunge, it stops flowing. Um, and also, of course, we can't, we can't get Naquium from, where the heck is our Naquium? Okay, it is still flowing. Uh, it's still doing pretty well. Um, but yeah, obviously we can't get Naquium from an infinite source. Uh, but yeah, I... Especially later in the game, I, I try to get away from using temporary mines at all. You can never fully automate making mines. And the higher your throughput gets the more of a pain it's going to be to keep replacing them. Okay. Since we're shelving the Coverex refit... Oh, how's... Let, let, let's check on electronic components. I want to make sure they haven't stopped for a while. Production, electronic components. There was a little dip a few minutes ago, like two minutes ago, not sure why. Uh, that cliff right there is probably, actually I have no idea. Because like I said, it shouldn't really have made much of a difference when we rescued that one train that was stuck. How many coal miners does a base like this need? Uh, I don't know, but we've got... Let's check. Coal mining drill, entity, 26 on this planet. I've never actually done this for the core drills so far. All surfaces. There's still one on Nalvis. Uh, 26 on Hagen, 24 on Grenis, 19... 13, 19, still one on Budkai. Muir? Where the heck is Muir? Is that our copper planet? Say we take off it is. We've only got six. We've still only got six drills on Muir. It's the only way to be sure. So it's not going to be difficult uh, if we find ourselves with a poor fragment bottleneck. For copper to fix that up. Artur's Lagic, welcome in. Hope you're doing well. Nuke the core drill, hokey dokey. Quickly, someone nuke the nervous one. <laughs> Too fast. Alright, where the heck is the nervous core drill? We already got this one. We already we got this one. The entire site we more. already got this one. We oh, are. I don't know. Sure. If, I don't think we did nuke that one. I don't think it existed. Where the heck is it? I say we take off and nuke the entire site. I say we, we take found off it. and nuke the entire site from orbit. It's the only way. How many sure. nukes do you guys need? It's the only way to be sure. Four apparently. Points for a nuke. Double tap. Double tap. 
We're double tapping the core drill. Be extra sure. So you guys want three nukes on the core drill, is what I'm hearing. Uh Okay then. I say we take off and nuke the entire It's the only way to be world. sure. Indeed. Alright. It's the only way to be sure. One. I think we got it. Two. Just waiting for the energy to recharge. And... I need a drum roll sound effect. Three. Fantastic. All right, so that was Artus Lakik, Ohio Soro, uh, Turtle, and I can't tell if Schnutsky wants the drill nuked yet again. That's your drum roll. Uh, Thonian always also wants a nuke. Gotta leave no doubt. I've got a fever, and the only cure is kaboom. 50 million patch at the edge of planets will last plenty. Core miners throughput is bad. Except you'll never, ever, ever have to refresh the core miners. And they give you other stuff. Uh, wait, so it's two more nukes, right? What are we nuking? What What is even left to nuke on this planet? Here we go. Pollution filter. Man, that takes me back. This run is more than long enough uh, for nostalgia to kick in. There we go. And one more. Did I already delete these ghosts? I did not. Uh, what else are we nuking here? This little chest full of iron. Sure. There we go. Air filters poofed. Let's clean it up. <laughs> Indeed. Alright, there we go. That's everyone's nukes for now. Now then. Uh, what requires our attention, I wonder? My SE did not have bigger patches? When are we cleaning up all of Nalvis? Honestly, I don't know. Um, at some point I need to actually go over there. I mean, look at this. Uh, my blurry eyes are telling me sample theory. Thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. That is a lot of nuke marks. Oh yeah, we... I keep forgetting, we still haven't nuked the, uh, the western wall. The southwestern wall. Also, there's an old mine over here. Okay. What now? We're actually 80% done on worker robot speed 16. Research has stopped, though, because... Because Deep Space Science Pack 4. That's going to be rough. No? Wait, what? What? Did, did we just happen to catch it filling up? 
Deep Space Science Pack 4 is saturated. Also, it's Pack 3 that we need. I don't... Oh, that is Pack 3. Dup. One, two, three, four. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah, Pack 3 is always struggling. Bottlenecked on the Naquim Tesseracts. And the Naquim Tesseracts are always bottlenecked on Arcosphere C. Oh, if uh, that's something I didn't fix already. I was pointing out earlier. Uh, Crynite Rods. We ended up with Crynite Rods only on this side. I didn't really think the imbalance would be this severe. Cry all night, indeed. <sighs> I don't really want to rebuild this, though. Let's prioritize delivering to the rightmost chests, yes. Do you mean in general, or just because they're closer here? They'd probably prioritize the closer ones, right? Looks like it needs some kind of balancer. Yeah, that's what I'm afraid of. The idea was that even if just one of these can take from and deliver to both sides, it would be enough, but it doesn't work out that way. I think it's largely because the bots prefer to deliver to the closer side. I'm coming to really hate Arcospheres. as we try to push towards a mere three per second for each science pack. I think this whole thing needs a redesign, but I, I really don't. I, I'm out of ideas, honestly. Except maybe, and this is going to be really messy, just like... I don't know, maybe if we had like one balancer or even two balancers between four builds like this. We couldn't really fit it here though if we tried to do that. Hence spending all that time earlier today trying to figure out if we could have like a very specific chain of Arcosphere flips just to support one build in particular. Short train and belt, maybe. I mean, I'd love to just spaghetti something in here so that we like merge and split these items, but there isn't really any room left in this case. One idea is to copy Veldak's blueprints. I see how it is. I see how it is. Also... We're still making Singularity tech cards. Even though... We need the Deep Space Science Pack 3s for science directly. Uh, did I not lower the priority on this? I did not. I think... I think what I would prefer Deep Space Pack, th Science Pack 3 is to get delivered to science itself first, rather than to make the Singularity tech cards. Also, this entire time I haven't switched off uh, modules, so we've really 
really been putting a strain on our resources. How have we been doing for modules lately? Even though we've been researching. Last 10 minutes we made 7 of these. Okay, last hour, 7, 13, 13. Point two, point two, point one per minute. Not great. It's about the same for the last 10 hours. It's actually surprisingly consistent. So we literally get like a, like a prod 9 every 10 minutes at this point. That's not really good enough unless I want to leave the game running overnight. And even then, not great. Maybe I shouldn't be trying to research right now. Copy of Veldek Blueprint? I don't know, it seems so sus. You'd want to double, nay, triple check them? Wow. No faith. Need more faster? Indeed. It would be, however, good it, uh, if there would be some way to have... A few more when the gate is finished. I don't understand. How many more of these signals have we not fit? Wait, how are you not able to drop this off? There's an entire stack here. What are you doing? What? Oh, I see how it is. Uh, how much are you carrying? Less than 10, right? Okay, now we drop this back to 2k. Like we should have done in the first place. Well, it doesn't have to be all the way down to 2k. It could have been like 2300 or something, but it's fine. No more hoverbots. Fantastic. Let's check on electronic compo. Okay, that's looking pretty solid. Quite solid, actually. Yeah, I think I, I think what happened actually. That's actually pretty obvious now that I think about it. The train that was stuck here was scheduled to deliver lithium to one of these two builds. And it just sat there indefinitely and another train wasn't scheduled to bring more lithium to the build that wasn't working. That's why we've been at like half electronic components for all, the, for all that time. few more balls? I think we're fine for balls. Yeah, we got blue balls, we got red balls. It's fine. Are these not beacon twos? They... well this one is. Arcosphere balls. Oh, okay. If only it were as easy to produce them as this. So how's Holmium plate since we made those changes? It's a little bit encouraging to see this running the moment that we check on it, but I'm sure it's had some downtime. Holmium cable production... Ooh... Oh. That's looking like a bit more area under the graph in the last 20 minutes or so. Uh, it's not unprecedented though, but it does more or less coincide with when we upgraded the prods over here. I mean... It's a, 
what is it, 56% to 80% productivity bonus for the first step throughout the chain where we keep multiplying out. So, not insignificant. Also, we should probably do another spaceship. What number are we up to? 59. We'll go to 60. Send 10 of each tier 9 to gen single sphere. What? All right, program it, and four egg polar five nine. Cool. Hopefully sixty is enough. I'm surprised the UPS isn't dipping noticeably as we keep adding ships, although I'm not adding them all that quickly. I don't think we've had to worry about aeroframe bulkheads for quite a while. How are we doing for heavy composite? We're not keeping up. Same goes for heavy assembly. Wait, 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 wait. Heavy composite? Oh, there, it does dip sometimes. Pretty frequently, actually, so... Speed modules would not help here. 8,000. That's two train loads, right? Yeah. So it's not like we're running... It's probably not like we're running out of inputs or the train gets here for this or that resource. They're not even consumed that quickly. I'm surprised heavy assembly of all things. What? what last hour we made almost 60 per minute and we only ate less than 5 per minute? Last 10 hours looks spot on. Hmm. Oh, just over an hour ago, there was one of those big spikes. Probably... When it got dumped into... What exactly? It's only 10 to make an antimatter engine. Only. I mean, that's like five antimatter engines for one stack of these. Oh, there it is. Speed eight. Holy jeebus. Three... 3.6 stacks of heavy assembly to make one speed module eight. 360 of these, that's seven and a bit stacks of one of the most resource-dense items in the game to make a single tier 9 module. Good gravy. No wonder we're not saturating this stuff. I bet a uh, heavy composite, I'm pretty sure a heavy composite goes into modules as well. Yep, there it is, tier 7. Yeah, I thought I remembered that um, heavy composite being here somewhere. Where is it? 
There it is. Yeah, tier 7. Okay. God, that's expensive. Uh, I mean, we are saturating... Now, Iridium Plate and Ingots are actually saturated all the time. Maybe... Maybe we double this. I'm pretty sure that'll end up eating all of it, like, super quickly. But it's going to result in more modules, which means making more stuff more faster. We should probably do that. I've got five prods on hand. There's another six up here. We only need eight to double this build. I'll just put it here. Why not? Alright. Construction train. Do you think? Actually, wait, 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 wait. Uh, turn off the requesters. Before you do your thing. Because we do not want to consume this stuff without prod bonuses. Not even once. And then if that train is back already, which it is not. How many modules did I... Uh, not modules, wide area beacons. Did I tell this to wait for? Also, I might be spamming more wide area beacons than are necessary. Uh, 42, that's not that many. We don't need to take them downstairs every single time, though. Where is our train? Here it comes. Through the elevator. Fantastic. How much is it carrying again? Oh. If you caught that, well done. Only six prods, but it, it's enough. Nope. Give it back. Uh, and Spooder. Get over here. Go finish the build off. Wait, these are still tier 6? Oh. Huh. Well... Uh... Hmm. How much faster is it if I just put speed modules in instead? Let's see. Ragamuffin, welcome in. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. 7.5 and 5.62 versus uh, ratio What? It's more than double. Uh, I think we should just put down some more tier 9 speed modules and a few efficiencies. 
to produce more to produce our speed modules more faster. Glad I switched off the requesters over here. Literally more than double, just from going uh, just from going from tier 6 speed and efficiencies to tier 9. I mean, that is with the same tier of productivity modules, but still. Why not just double it anyway? Uh, because doubling the rate that we're capable of should be more than enough to lead to a material bottleneck uh, by itself. I'm pretty sure. I, I imagine. We'll see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And that's the magic number, right? Yeah. 13 and 7. Oh, so now we now we've run out of heavy girders. Um I don't think we're actually out of heavy girders though. Not even close. Let's revisit How fast do we eat these? Uh, more than half a stack per second. And we re request more when we're down to 10 stacks. Yeah, that might be suboptimal. Um, okay, differences in rate of consumption. One and a half stacks of heat shielding per second. Uh, like 60% of a stack of heavy girders. A third of a stack of rare metals. And like almost... At like three and a half stacks of iridium plate per second. Damn. Um, so heat shielding. What was the slowest one? Uh, rare metals is slowest. Iridium plate is fastest. If we, if we balance them all equally and we want to have some slack, we can do a train and a half for each. Um, that's already two trains of iridium plate, which is not a bad idea, I think. Rare metals is set to only 110 stacks. Um... So we've got like, still only got like 27 and a half seconds to get the rare metals here. Uh, 4,000, right? Exactly 20, uh, exactly the same amount of time to deliver Iridium Plate. Uh, what about... Yeah, it's, it's actually twice as much time... to... deliver heavy... No, I must be miscalculating. Because these get consumed at the same rate, but... This one's got half the stack size. Fifty hundred is a train load. Oh yeah, no, it's the difference. So wait, there's only five hundred. This is 10 stacks over, this is 100 stacks over. Uh, 20, 10. Hmm. 
What, what's our total? Because we can... Theoretically, we can go up to 640 stacks. This is 200... 310... 430... 540... So theoretically, we can fit like another 100 stacks. Uh, another train load, but I don't entirely trust that. But I'm, I'm pretty sure we can get away with asking for another 1,000 heavy garter here. Pretty easily. We have 11k rare metals, but the gutters only to 5.5k. Even though they use up the same speed. Yeah, but the stack size is different. Um, 50, 50, 100, 40. So, Iridium Plate is like three and a half stacks per second that we're consuming. Rare Metals is by far the slowest per stack. It's twice as fast as, uh, twice as slow as Heavy Girders. Now it's heat shielding. This is kind of a good problem to have compared to how materially bottlenecked we were on this when we first built it. But... I can't say I love to see it. Okay, so here come the girders. Uh, we already have the girders, what the hell? Where's my heat shield? There isn't even any heat shield coming yet. Are we short on heat shield? Oh no. Heat shield, ingredient, no not all surfaces. Uh, let's see. This one's super slow. Mole doesn't really count. And this one's defunct. So is it really just this build that's eating heat shields right now? At least on the ground? Heat shield? I thought we super overdid heat shields. Where's that build? Here we go, heat shield and LDS. Apparently not. We also don't have that much storage for it. Heat shield. Let's see. Last 50 hours consumption. 1.2k per minute. Exactly what we've been making, so probably not keeping up. Maybe. 1.2k, 1.2k. I guess with that many hours... Last 10 minutes. Produced 1.3k, consumed 1.8. Yeah, I don't think, uh, I don't think this is fast enough right now. 24 per second. Um, that's not enough to support just this build. It's a third of what we would need to run this continuously. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. As I said, uh, this is... This upgrade is going to shift it to have a material bottleneck. Um, I didn't expect it to be something as mundane as heat shielding, though. I thought it would be iridium-based. Got a beacon? Yeah. Uh, I was just considering that. I don't... Uh, it's already got tier 6 modules. I don't... I don't really... I don't really want to make another one of these builds. And I don't really want to... Spend tier 9s on them. But I, 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 I guess I hate... Spending tier 9s on it less... Than making another copy of this build. What else consumes heat shield? Because I'm pretty sure... If we take modules out of the equation, um, we should have more production for heat shield than we ever need. 
to spam signs, that is. I don't remember if it goes into any science packs directly. It does go into multispectral mirror, which goes into a few things. Spaceship floor. Maybe that's part of why we've been consuming so many. Because normally we can take heat shield pretty much for granted. We do have beacon? Yeah. We're going to get a bit more aggressive with it. It's already beacon 2 as well. How fast does this eat? Almost a stack of sulfur per second. Stone tablet is one per second. One stack. And a tenth of a stack of steel plate per second is nothing to scoff at either. Alright, what ratio do we want to support tier 6 prods? Six efficient. Uh, nope, it's 13.7 again. Alright, so what's our rate now? 42.8 per second. That's not that much better. We can only take... we can only take rocks for granite. What you did is there and I see it. So our old rate was like 1.5k, now we're at 2.3 per minute. Uh, more like 2.56 allegedly. Even so, uh, it's it's not enough to keep uh, to keep this build alone fed. It's just gonna have to keep going until it's saturated. I, I guess I could. I already have a low priority on this. So this is the drop off of last resort uh, for all of these resources. Already. Well, remains to be seen whether in an hour or three or something we end up with saturated uh, heavy assemblies, heavy composites and assemblies again. Um, I suspect. It's not going to happen as long as we don't turn off. Yeah, no, it's definitely not going to happen as long as we don't turn off module spamming. That is just unfathomably thirsty. And it looks like unsurprising, uh, surprising no one, it looks like Vitamelange is our bottleneck for making more prod modules. Um... Can we just double check? I feel like Vitam Lunge hasn't been flowing like it used to, but it might just be that... It might just be that we let it back up. And then when we started spamming prod 9s, it just never catches up again. That's gotta be it. We already saturated all of this with prod nines. It's a little bit further down the chain than like uh, all of these steps, but we're able to put a relatively few prod modules in like kind of one of the choke points that everything goes through. 
We've also got the T9 prod modules uh, at the drop-off that the ships use most, of, uh, most often. Or two of them, actually. Mm. Good time to check, I think, if we're actually picking up all of our Vitamelange. Apparently we're not. Even the small Musk Garden has 148k. Not sure why. No ships on the way right now. I don't know what's going on with our ship dispatch. Apparently we've got two ships on the way back with uh, Venom Lunge right now. Almost as low as it gets, so it really shouldn't be deprioritized. 8, 12, 16, 22, plus 6. 28, 30, 32. It's about 35 ships that are on the way back right now with various resources. Uh, that's more than half of our ships. Yeah, that sounds about right. Hmm. I have no idea how I would do it, but I do wish I could casually switch priority to one resource or another. Have you considered using the cheat chests to get the UPS to go up? No. No, I have not. Unless you mean the Arco Link chests, where calling them a cheat is a uh, half joking. It would be quite a task. I mean, it might be well worth it to replace uh, to replace our ship empire with Arco Link chests. To bring things back here. Okay, what's our fastest planet for core fragments? Um, I think uh, Bombato is right up there. It's almost nine k radius. I mean, we haven't we haven't actually built that many drills on Bombato. But it's more than enough to to keep the core frags saturated here. Two thirty one thousand. So anyway, at this moment, uh, the number of jewels we have on Bombato is only s only eight, but it offers us one hundred and forty two core frags per second. Uh, I'm pretty sure whatever it was we calculated oh, okay w whatever it was we calculated could fit for the input or output using loaders around a arco link chest um, 8 times 90 7,200 per second. Okay. That's on a whole other scale from what I had in mind. So suffice to say, whatever, even the biggest planet with the fastest resource type in the game, uh, with loads and loads and loads and loads of productivity bonuses, uh, mining productivity bonuses, um, yeah, one Arco Link chest is going to be way more than enough throughput using loaders uh, to have input at one end and output on the other. That's actually bonkers. Uh, we've got like 
30 outposts almost. 20 something. I, I somehow suspect we're not going to need that many. Uh, if we actually get it to bottleneck on the actual core fragments. Uh, that's actually not that many. 8, 13, 19, 17, number 20, 21, 22, 23. That's still a lot. I guess we could still use ships, like, in-system, where it's really, really, really short range. If we just want to save ourselves some Arcospheres. But let's say, for the sake of argument, um, that we set up an Arco link chest for every single outpost. Uh, and they're each going to have... What could... What do you... What am I doing? I'm clicking the second icon down here, thinking it'll make the electric networks go away. Okay. Um, let's say we have an Arco link chest to bring the core fragments back for each separate... each separate outpost. Uh, we would need... Four hundred and sixty Arco Cheebus. Arco all time. Two thirds of all of the Arco spheres that we've brought back, not counting the few that we lost. Uh, yeah, about two thirds of all of the Arco spheres that we've found would have to be consumed to make Arco link chests. Uh, and then also we would have to... I need to actually, you know, double check the procedure and make sure it works. We can just, like, save scum for that. It's whatever. But, like, what I think we need to do is... Do not place the Arco chest on the ship. Fly the ship out to you know, wherever we're going. Bombato. Uh, land the ship on Bombato. Or we could do it in orbit, since we've just already got this infrastructure here. Um, whether it's going to be orbit or on the planet, so we place one Arco link chest here normally, right? And run belts into it. We place another Arco link chest in the ship. And then we fly the ship back to another surface. And supposedly uh, it'll still have the same channel as that other chest. And then we can land it on Hagen. Uh, and then exploit. I don't know if it's considered cheating or not. I don't know if it necessarily works either. 60% of the Arcospheres for 50% of the UPS sounds good. I mean, it's also going to be a lot of work just refactoring all this stuff that we've already built, but yeah. What about having local hubs with one Arcosphere for each system? Then you only need like three links. One Arco for each system. You mean like... Like we've got a, a few planets in the Asimia system, and then the ships bring the stuff back to one specific spot, and then there's an Arco ship here. Uh, Arco ship. There's a, like an Arco link storage here, and then we send it back. Maybe, but then they have to go all the way back for fuel at some point, right? Or we have to logistic some antimatter and space elevator cables and stuff all the way back here. Uh, 
Speaking of which, uh, we should probably... It shouldn't be too difficult. Um, just like we were talking about before. Let's pretend this is an Arco link. Uh, we could probably use the Arco links to... supply cables and stuff as well. So like... At the... Let's say we're just using two belts. Uh, at the end where we're putting core frags in... We could just say... Core frag... Whatever type. Less than, I don't know, 60? I'm pretty sure even just one stack would probably be enough. But the point is... Yeah, like, we should get full throughput if at the other end we've got filtered removal of core frags. Uh, and we could also say space elevated cables, for example. Actually, it'd be super, super simple if... Would you stop? If we only need, like, three different items delivered to the outpost. We need space elevator cables. We need space train power packs. Uh, we need to bring the destroyed power packs home. That's no issue. Um, but yeah, it's only like, here it is. Space elevator cables, media, installation, space train power packs... Theoretically, we never need to resupply logistic robots. Well, okay, we're not going to be using the bots to load ships anymore, so we absolutely don't need to send in logistic robots to make sure... Theoretically, they, they never crash anyway, but this, this is just to make sure we have some replacements. Um, but let's cut those out of the picture. So we've got space elevator cable, media defense, space train power pack, um, and whatever type of core fragment it is. Uh, that's four slots for the set filters, set filters blacklist. So then we don't need very fancy, um, we don't need very fancy uh, circuitry to control this. Um, we could perhaps just make sure we actually, I think a, I think a filtered one of these should be fine. Destroyed power pack. Actually, I guess we will still have bots over there because it's just convenient to have the bots load the trains like this. Not to mention the space elevator cables and such. Honestly, it doesn't really make sense to have a space elevator at out outposts anymore. Except that this is where we get the power for the core drills, and that's actually probably by far the easiest, most consistent way to do it. So I guess that's still fine. We're not just making an excuse to not have to tear down the space elevator. Uh, anyway. So... If the bots... Uh, 
if the bots deliver destroyed space train power packs so it gets inserted into the Arco chest uh, it should basically instantly get picked up from here Here's the thing, though. Let me empty this out. Full frag. What? No, don't. Remove unfiltered items. I thought it would delete all these arcospheres. Okay. Full frags. Um. There should only be, like, three stacks in here. I I'm pretty sure, honestly, we could just say keep it below one stack. Uh, and that would probably... Probably allow full throughput. I don't think we're ever reaching 180 per second on any of our planets, but we could say, for the sake of it, it we'll shape the build so that it's possible to do, like, double that, which is absolutely not happening with, uh, with core drills. Uh, this is supposed to be... So only 20. Uh, let's see. No, don't be unfiltered. So we're just going to delete everything that comes through here. Oh, right. This isn't actually an Arcolink chest, is it? Uh, minor detail. I guess for the sake of our little simulation, we could just do this. Kind of. Uh, anyway. Or I could just, you know, actually put some Arco Link chests here. Arco Link. Keep it below throughput per teleport tick. Throughput per teleport tick. Oh no. Well, I guess we're about to find out. Uh, where is it? Why, why does it jump back when I try to do that? Alright. Dark. Arco link storage. Um, can we please empty that out? Unfiltered. Okay. Let's see. And you need to read from this. Well, I don't think that's going to be an issue. I'm not about to be trying to use eight belts uh, through an Arco link anyway. Um, but yeah, that is 360 core frags per second from one planet. I, I don't think we're going to be reaching that cap. Uh, anyway, the point is we do get full throughput with far less than one stack of core frags taking up room in the Arcolink chest. Does it ever hit 20? No, it, it just keeps flickering on 2. Or maybe 4. 
Um, but yeah, you can see saturated purple belts coming out. Uh, anyway, what I want to see here is... We're trying to put in ammo, cables, uh, what was the other thing? Uh, discharged power packs, and maybe robots as well, but we'd have to get a bit more complicated if we do that. Discharged power packs. Okay, so now there's four types of item in the Arco chest, basically, always. I'm just going to block this off. So we're going to simulate, like, that the machines that we're feeding are completely saturated. So that's just going to sit at actually exactly 20, pretty much. All right, now what I want to check is uh, if we put in some destroyed power packs. What I'm curious about is in the moment where there's five types of items in here, will this inserter lose its mind? That doesn't need to be filtered. And the answer is yes. And now we have problems. Actually, nope, the problems disappeared. Oh, it was because there were multiple swings here. Okay, so typically, uh, well not typically, just always, it's actually gonna, gonna be like literally one or two destroyed space train power packs. Um, can I, like, remove the excess here? There we go. That this will put in all at once. So it is going to result in this over-inserting just a little bit. Mm, I don't like that. I think we should probably... I think we have to add a combinator to make this work properly. It's going to have to be set filters whitelist for whatever it is we're trying to put in. And instead of just reading directly from the chest... Uh... Wait. Do we only need a constant combinator to make this work? Because we're never going to have destroyed power packs over here. Constant combinator. Uh, so basically, we're just going to have a negative number. Wait, no, that's not right. Because we can't read this as a negative implicitly. Yeah, no, that doesn't work. I, I guess I could just go set... Yeah, yeah, wait, wait, wait. We could still go set filters blacklist. And I could literally just put a constant combinator so that it'll ignore the signal from the destroyed power packs. So then when we put these in here... Oh. This one won't act up. But it is one of those systems where if something goes wrong, it won't self-correct. Like, if we, for some reason, put something that's not supposed to be in this chest in here, uh, it's going to lose its mind. So 
but since it's got such a specific purpose, that should be fine. So we don't need a combinator to like subtract what's in here and then set filters whitelist. We need a constant combinator to say what's supposed to be in there. Uh, I think I'll just set this to go up to 40. Just because I don't like those uh, icons flickering like that. And we still have plenty of room left over, obviously. So how... Um... How do we decide how much we're taking out of here for the for these items? If I just do them one at a time, like one per inserter, uh, it's really, really straightforward. Just connect to the robot network. Uh, if ammo is less than some number, go ahead and pick up ammo. But, that's weird, why is it not actually picking it up? It's no, oh, because it's not connected to the logistic network. Um, but how do I do it for three resources at once? Preferably without a combinator. I don't know if that's possible. Uh, we could probably just... Actually, that's easy. Passive provide... Okay, maybe not so easy. Pretty easy still. Passive provider, set filters, blacklist. And blacklist the core franks. Oh, also... Apparently I... No, never mind. Set filters... Blacklist. Cool. That's actually super easy. Blacklist also the destroyed cards. Good point. But now we're... Now we're too full. Uh... I might have to use more combinators than I would like. It's not that big of a deal, though. One moment, please. Alright, do we need to change this at all? Are we still going to be sending Logibots over? I don't think so. Because, well, for starters, uh, with the system as it exists, I'm pretty sure we never have Logibots crashed or kidnapped over here. Um, but when we take spaceships out of the equation, they absolutely should never, that should never happen. Uh, once we've got, like, a few Logibots seeded, it's never going to need help. Can't wait for new Selector Combinator? I know, right? Uh, is research going to keep going anytime soon? Still missing uh, Deep 3. As always. Missing Naquium Tesseracts, as always. Uh, we got the Cryonite re-delivered. Did I set this to like... To keep it sort of balanced, I could let it run out before we deliver more. 
That's one way to fix this. Finally, 20 combinators done only in one. Yes. Yeah, we're, we're struggling on Arcos VXC, it looks like, as always. Okay. So, what? We can use set filters blacklist just for this one, right? Like, that's pretty straightforward. Just, just make sure we blacklist. Is it blacklist? Yeah. I mean, I, I wish there was a convenient way to put something here that means every single signal except for these. Just negative a million or something. Uh, we can probably just leave that at that. Yeah, that, that one doesn't need help. This one should be unconditional. And this one... What? Oh, I thought this wire was connected here, but it's not. This is unconditional. Putting in the destroyed power packs. Uh, and this one just needs to... I guess, it, yeah, it's got to be set filters whitelist. With like... Stop, 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 stop. With a list of what's supposed to be in here. And then subtracting. Which means one, one constant, one arithmetic, and just a little bit messier than we would like. So we've got uh, don't connect that directly there. Set filters whitelist. Each times negative one. Output each. Uh, and the constant combinator actually connects straight to the uh, inserter. What? What am I doing? Oh no. That should do it. I feel like. I feel like this would be a little bit tidier. Might use a red wire here just because... Show that it's different. Alright. Why did this stop? Did I accidentally pause it? I did. Okay. Uh... So we're gonna say... Ammo, uh, cable, ammo, just, like, just a stack of each is more than enough. It's just so that it's available for the bots to take it to the requester chests. Soon the big 100? Just reach mining prod 95, jeebus. Uh... You know, I'm kind of conflicted. Like, I kind of hate that this is going to be necessary. Um, but it's going to be kind of fun putting it together. And I know the throughput is going to be obscene once we do do it. Also, a lot of our UPS should come back once we... Uh, once we retire our poor spaceships... Okay, space train power pack discharged. There we go. And that's it. Let me just put a robo port here so this flashing stops. 
Simple as that. So, we've got... Four frags flowing through. We've got cables, space train power packs, and media defense ammo made available at the outpost. Uh, we've got destroyed space train power packs getting put back on Hagen without messing up our other inserters. And you know what? I I could get rid of the uh poor frag filter on this thing. So if we wanted to have like a bot filter or something, we could do that too. That icon there was just a little bit like Distracting, confusing. Make the requester chest an infinite chest as well. I'd like to see that going through consistently. You mean the destroyed packs? Easy peasy. Yeah, 10 stacks is more than enough as long as we're not trying to move too many item types. If we were trying to move n number of item types through, that would get a bit complicated. Looks great, thank you. Alright. I'm going to take a little break here. Uh, let's save. And... I guess instead of floating from random little job to random little job as we creep towards having enough uh, modules to really, really push the base forward, now we've got a huge, huge refactoring task ahead of us. Um, but first I have to prove that... Uh, that we actually can set up the Arco chests this way. We'll just go to, like, our nearest neighbor and find out. All right. Let's do some words on stream. Because I need a break. Time to retire the spaceship. I did just save it, right? I'm. I probably shouldn't stand in the exact same spot every time I save it. It's gonna gonna lead to confusion. All right. There we go. You did fantastic. All right, we'll start words on stream in about 30 seconds. I'll be back in a few minutes. Good luck, have fun, and I'll see you soon.
Okay. Let the word. Oh, I forgot to unpause. Let the words continue till the end of this one. I can't decide if I want to. Let, let, let's design a block to consume the Argospheres. Uh, I'm pretty sure the rate that we consume Arcos from a fully upgraded 12 pulverizer machines is already pretty fast. Oh, we're going to get the perfect? Maybe. Maybe not. Smashed it, though. Nicely done. Alright, let's continue with Factorio, shall we? Uh, so. Tier 9 modules in 12 pulverizers gives us 132 core frags per second. So if we double this, which we should be able to fit under one beacon, uh, I think that'll be... Healing the leaderboard again? What? Oh, you mean covering it up? I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> Look, whenever whenever a streamer takes a break, 10% of the viewers go bye-bye. So it, it took a little longer than I meant to, so... I wanted to hurry up and get back to the game. Uh, I'm pretty sure we can finish... Finish? I'm pretty sure we can... Yeah, pretty easily fit 24 of these machines under one beacon. Which would be 264 or just under 3 belts of core frags. Uh, that's pretty good. Uh, and bearing in mind... So, so what I'm trying to trying to make sure is... Could we actually retool it so that where the spaceship drop-offs were, we just have uh, Arculink chests with core frag consumers? Uh, and we can direct belt at least most of the small stack size Pulmonite, for example. Oh, that is saturated as. Okay, what the hell? This is actually bottlenecking on consumption. That's got to be temporary, right? We're bottlenecking on consumption of Holmanite on the left. But the one in the middle was... Starved. Uh, maybe I sh should... Maybe I should allow the trains to deliver some of this Holmanite. from the other two blocks. Oops. Guess we'll just send the construction train by there. Let's go. Alright, so oh, I still haven't fixed one of these. Which one is it? Rhinite. Whoops. Are we consuming the Crynite right now? We are not. Oh, yes we are. Albeit somewhat slowly. Anyway. Uh, it's, yeah, so anyway, the big idea is... For any one planet... We have more than three... We've only got three Holmium planets, right? Iridite... 
One, two, three, four. Convenient so far. I know Vulcanite is two planets. Uh, so far so good. We've got at least the same number of ship drop-offs per planet for each resource. Anyway, uh, the big idea is to retool this so that instead of having spaceships... God, we're gonna... We're gonna need so much less antimatter once we switch over. Holy crap. Oh yeah, and to this end, I also want to send our ship out to get some more Arcospheres. Where have we not been yet? Let's see. Last place we went... Was it Spectre? We've been to Spectre. I think we've been to Creepy Hollow. We have... Yeah, we have been to Creepy Hollow. Sea of Sorrows. Shadeland. Black Mirror. Dark. Let's go to Black Mirror. Why not? Uh, what's the address? Black Mirror... Asteroid Field 1123. You're ready to go. Yes, you are. What the hell? Uh... We're missing some space probe rockets. But not Argosphere collectors. Wasn't expecting that. So why are... Why are Space Probe Rockets not finding their way to the mall upstairs? We've got plenty of them here. Uh, don't tell me I just haven't put it into the new system. Tag... Space probe rocket. No, no, we do. What? Oh, I need to refresh. There it is. We have space probe rockets here. Am I just not requesting them at the mall? I think we used to. I could be wrong. Uh, signal. I think maybe we used to make them here without productivity bonuses. We've got a request for them. We're looking for five... Oh, I see the problem. We're looking for exactly 500. That's probably all it is. So somehow we ended up with... not a round number of space probe rockets. Alright, uh, I guess just bump it up to 600. Wait. Yeah. 100 is one train load, one stack each. So there should be a train coming to pick this stuff up. There already is, we're just not getting the yellow light. Okay, cool. So a couple of minutes and we'll have our space probe rockets. Uh, the address was 1123, right? Asteroid field, 1123. Was Black Mirror. Antimatter will no longer matter, indeed. Is it possible to add more planets to SE? I get different planets on different runs. I want all the planets. Uh, I don't know. Not that I know of. Okay, I, I think... I know spaceships aren't everything for our UPS, but I think it's going to jump kind of dramatically when we get rid of them. Alright, so now that that's in motion... Um, I kind of want to, well, to 
be honest. It should probably be an adaptation of the builds that we've already got in place. Just to make it that much easier to port over. Maybe. I remember you redoing spaceships with 50-ish UPS. Indeed. Alright. Um, so we're not going to need... Oh god. A lot of this stuff. Not going to need this. Not going to need that. Not going to need that. We can still summon our cables and stuff over here. Don't need this anymore. Don't need this anymore. I don't think we need any circuitry except for what I already designed a few minutes ago. I guess... All we're really keeping is, and, and that's not strictly necessary, is keeping the belts, the direct belts out of here. We can always just change that. Although, I wouldn't mind keeping stone and vanilla core fragment output in the same spot. Yeah, all these output train stops on the north side seems good to me. Also, this to get rid of the... Well, I guess we could turn it into an LTN stop to get rid of destroyed space train power packs. Don't need this. None of this has to be exactly here. Um, I suppose... I suppose it might be convenient if we leave this in the same spot. I really don't think it's necessary. And... Yeah. I don't think this shape is going to work out so well if we're trying to fit twice as many pulverizers or up to twice as many pulverizers in place. We could, like, strip some of them out in instances where the outpost just doesn't have that kind of throughput. Forget this for now. And... Where am I trying to put this? I, I, I might have to move the pylon substation a bit. Where's the middle? That looks weird, I don't like it. Alright, uh, I don't think I want to keep these output belts the way they are. We'll see. We're trying to build the whole thing around a single... Where the hell... Where did I put it? Good question. We're trying to build the whole thing around a single link, right? Oh, we deleted it? 
I know it was just kind of a proof of concept, but it will take me at least five seconds to redo that circuitry. That was perhaps a little bit unwise. Oh well. Uh, I don't really want this to be part of the blueprint, though. Oh, it is here somewhere. No? No, the contents are just preserved. Okay. Uh, but yeah, what we're going to need is... Assuming, assuming all this works, of course. We need a landing spot for a ship so that the Arku Link chest is going to be exactly where it's supposed to be. I guess I can probably just pick a dollies it around once we land it, but I don't want to count on that. So we're going to have to figure out exactly where the ship is supposed to land. But putting that aside... Hmm. It doesn't really seem to be... a good symmetrical spot I want to put this. We need a nice Arco chest floor? Wait, what? Get this out of here. Pylon goes here. Uh, move this over a bit. Might want to move it a bit to the south, actually. Okay, how many tiles apart would this need to be? Actually, I should probably design it with the trickiest version of this in mind. Which is probably just uh, one that requires pipes. Room for sulfuric acid for the uh, for the iridite. Alternatively, this one is fluid output. That's not a big deal. Um, although squeezing in these extra pulverizers might be a little bit tricky. Rimmits, welcome in. Hope you're doing well. Welcome, welcome. Um, that one's basically just the same. And thank you for the follow. That one's pretty much the same. This one's basic. That one's less than basic. I could have sworn there was one other variant of the shape of these recipes that we need to bear in mind. But apparently not. Most of them just give 0 to 4 core fragments, 1 stone, and like 16 of whatever it is, for example. Uh, but yeah, it really just does seem to be one fluid in or out uh, is the only complication that we need to worry about for any of these. I'm a little concerned about how Vulcanite is going to look if we try and like double it in the one block, considering how we barely fit 
the uh the in block crushed vulcanite processing previously. And again, there's a bunch of space we haven't been using here. Okay, so we'll we'll just use uh, a. Hold on, isn't this slower? Sixteen erudite, twenty seconds, zero to four, sixteen one. Pretty sure these are the same. Yeah. Hmm. I just kind of expected Iridite to be slower because it's slower in a lot of other ways. 20 seconds, 0 to 4, 16, 1. Okay, cool. Alright. Oops. No, no, no. Okay. I guess... Uh, I guess those are just core frags. Are we going to pick them all up? I hope so. I guess the rest will go over here. Uh, anyway. We're going to use core fragment iridite. Core fragment rare metals. I forgot about that one. Nope, that's pretty much the same. Core Fragment Iridite as a template where we have to worry about fluid. Oh, hell, greetings from... Uh, hello, greetings from Germany. I started Crestorio 2 yesterday, and now I see it's much more than I thought. Well, this is also space exploration with Crestorio 2. Uh, but yes, uh, it is pretty big. Chris Prolon, welcome in. Hope you're doing well today. All right, let's say we put our arcosphere like down here. Um, and I'm not too worried about the shape of it just yet. I just want the rate calc. That is 264. Almost three belts of ore fragments per second. Cool, cool, cool. Um, I think I would like to do four belts. Well, hold on. How much does this use in the middle? 132. That's still more than one belt. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we should have some more horizontal space. Maybe I'll change the layout of the train stops and stuff. Might do the pipes in the middle. How much output is one column? Uh, 95 plus 12 plus 6. So basically two belts. More than one belt anyway. Any tips about must-haves for a beginner? Hmm. Uh, a spirit of adventure. Don't worry about doing things wrong. Um, there, there is no wrong. There is only different places for the bottleneck. And keep experimenting. And it, it, if you redo something seven times, that's not. A mistake that's just iterating don't be afraid to delete and rebuild exactly yeah um so i could put the pipes here perhaps And if we do do, if we do do, can an inserter keep up with this super easily? 
Uh, 11 per second. Yes, it can. I wasn't expecting to put that crap on the belt, but okay. Or fragment. Iridite. Got to filter it. If I do it a little bit further apart, we could use loaders. So that we don't have the inserters going on and off all the time and doing their weird grabby stuff. Which presumably maybe uses a bit more UPS than all of this stuff just flowing straight in. Let's move you over. And copy past a flip. We can even still fit this. Actually, this might be a bit awkward. Could move the whole thing down a little bit. Oh, no. Okay, that looks weird, but it does work. But it does look a little strange. I don't like that. I don't like that either. Can we somehow? Probably not. I mean, I could move this up arbitrarily, but. Not too fond of that either. Let's just leave that as it is. Mm, I really don't like that little bit of inconsistency. In any case, we can certainly fit that here. Uh, and then for output... Well, okay, what's an entire... What's a double column? This is all max tier modules, yes? Yes. That's a lot of iridite. Two hundred and twenty-six is almost three belts. Hmm. Almost three belts for three different solid outputs. I'm kind of tempted to put uh, delivery cannon chests in between. Just so that we can use filtered loader outputs. It's actually pretty neat. Can we do better? I'm pretty sure with splitters and such it's going to be a bit spaghetti. Splitters and filters on the splitters and so on and so forth. I mean... We've done it before. But this was... 
This is like one belt over here between three of these. I like this cannon chest business, indeed. So yeah, something like that. I guess we don't actually need filters until the very end over here. Although it might be clarifying, shall we say? Actually, no. 98, that's a little bit more than one belt for the erudite itself. Yeah, I don't want to filter these. That's actually a little bit awkward that this is just a little... It's like 10% more than one belt. Uh, yuck. Do not approve. We could probably use this space for a train stop or two. If we so desire. Uh, and the other... The other input over here is going to be pretty straightforward. Except I think... You can go back here. Late morning, Ian Noah, welcome in. One belt for two remnants. And then filter. Uh, the two remnants add up to... Yeah, not very much at all. Yeah. That's going to have to be the way to go. Um, but yeah, this will basically go over here. And then... I was going to say the same thing on the opposite side. That looks right. So what's this capable of? Consuming 136... Is that it? Wait, what? Oh no, we put this too far apart. Okay. That's gonna have to change. We need to go two tiles in. All right, 264 core frags per second. That's more like it. That's way more than we're going to be getting from any one outpost. And then we can just trim the number of pulverizers that we have. Um, but that does leave a question of how we're going to do this. I could just use inserters to put stuff into the delivery cannon chests. These individually... Okay, here's the thing. Um, a superior inserter can do almost 45 items per second with direct insertion, but it's going to be picking up little bits of stone, little bits of uh, core frag all the time. I'm pretty sure it'll be fast enough, though. We can double check. Superior inserter. It's, ooh, it's a little bit close. Oh, no, we bottlenecked on the inserter output already. Especially when the productivity bonus kicks in. Yeah, uh, it's because we have to use an entire swing to pick up one stone, for example. A 
That's why I wanted to use loaders. That's no good. Okay. So, how do we keep this this close together? I, I mean, I could get rid of these, like, loaders on this side. These inserters. I don't really want to do that. I don't like having the inserters, like, grabbing and figuring out which items they can grab from the belt when it's all moving that quickly. Um, we could probably... Nope. Maybe. Um, how exactly would we merge this? We wouldn't. Good talk. Why not the strong box so you can use a second one? What do you mean? Why not the strong box? The two by two chest? Monster welcoming and that didn't quite sound like a word. Welcome in. Phoenix welcome in also. Is one lane enough for Four pulverizers. Maybe enough space for three lanes. Uh, yeah, no, we need. Th uh, what is it? One ninety. About. Uh, two and a half belts. To handle the output. So you can have a second grabber? Oh, right. Yeah, I, I guess... Uh, I don't love the look of this, but um, I guess technically we could just... If we were really desperate, we could have filtered... Um, filtered inserters to deal with each of these. Use one belt for eight, uh, one belt each for pull for right. What? Oh. But four doesn't divide into this very well. Uh, I guess. But we still don't have room to... Chris Prollen, but thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. But then we'd have to have these, like, lining up in a weird way as well. Okay, let's say we do something like this. It would have to be, like... And like that, for example. Not a fan of that aesthetic. But we do have plans B through D, at least. Always good to have. I was hoping to somehow... Do the 3x3 three three chest. And just kind of squeeze things in there. Like this, perhaps? A 
that's two. This is going to end up looking very similar to something we did before. What was it? One belt between four of them, right? Except on each side they don't divide into four. We could just do one to three. That's an option. Then, same, same, but different, except on this side we'd have to stop using that line of undergrounds. Yeah. Uh, and we can actually put this a little bit closer together. And then it might be easiest if we have a big chest to do filtered loaders from. Alright, that might work. And Oop. elegant, very elegant, fantastic. Uh, so then we're just gonna like vanilla core frag. Wait, what's the max rate for the whole thing for vanilla core frags? Okay, way less than one belt. That's a lot of belts of iridite, but for our two byproducts. Uh, a lot less than one belt. So we can just do it like this, and like that. Uh, vanilla core frag. Over this way. And just because of how it lines up. I mean, I might push this back like a tile or two. Uh, if it results in this looking a little less wonky. But this just happens to line up pretty well to do the old push from one belt to the other thing. Can we add a filtered slot in the storage boxes? So there's always one slot dedicated to them. Uh, no, you can't do that with regular storage chests. You'd need like a train wagon or something. It'd be nice if they added that to vanilla. Uh, and then same thing over here, but with stone. Uh, and we're going to unlimit the back end, limit the front end. And set, set the provide stack threshold to like 110 or something. Why was this disconnected? Oh, because it accidentally got cut and pasted. Yeah, uh, just so that the train doesn't come for exactly 100 stacks and then stuff gets pushed. Okay. What is this? Wait, what, what the heck was that? Where did we copy it from? 
I vaguely remember this. Let's, uh... Let's go deconstruct that, shall we? There's no construction bots here. Little temporary fix kind of stop. That raises an interesting question. If you could catch a thing and it lowered your... If you could do such a thing and it lowered your throughput, how would you even debug that? Uh, if we did what? Sorry? Oh yeah, how's our iron and stuff doing? I refactored that a little bit earlier this week. Uh... Pretty well, it looks like. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, iron is... Steel is completely saturated as well. Okay, cool. Very good. The filtered slot in a multi-item box. How would it lower your th throughput? Um, so how many belts of erudite? More than two. Oh, that's annoying. That's actually... That's actually a little bit annoying. Just a little bit more than two belts. That's only if we go completely ham in one block. How many would it take for, like, 180? 11 would be significantly less than 180. We could just bottleneck it on the output belts. They'll be nice and saturated. But that's only if we actually supply that many core fragments from one outpost, which, uh... No. Basically, no. So, yeah, I don't think I mind. I don't think I mind putting a... That doesn't quite line up where I wanted it to. Maybe I could split these apart slightly just so it lines up nicely. Now, I'm going to direct belt this to nearby blocks, but if it's really fast, maybe we could use trains to catch half of it. But I imagine we could probably... We, we could probably deal with that many core frags. We're already direct belting this, right? Yeah. Well. Iridite stacks to 10. There's no way we're going to use trains for that. Why is this even switched on? What? Oh, no. Wait, 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 wait. Why are these belts empty? What? What do you... What? Hey, what? What is going on with this? I th think there are mis. I think them. Oh. Yeah, I think there may be some mistakes here. But why is this one? Because there's no iridite left here. Okay. Uh... So this is like two to one. 
Two of these blocks support one of these chonkers. Um, if we're going to have, theoretically, 380 iridite per second, could it be supported by just one of these? Oh, we need bots for that. Give me some nines. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so this would be 380 erudite per second. One of these blocks could do, could consume 316. Okay, especially because we know we're not going to actually fill one of these. That should probably work out fairly well. I guess if we really needed to, we could do a block on either side. Ah, uh, yes, next not balanced balancer? Wait, what? Spag gone bad, I know, right? Can you do me a small favor and show me how you produce the first science materials? Uh, do you mean like the... The science packs that we do on the ground. Um, at this stage of the game, these are really small. Uh, advanced assembly machine builds. Literally just like one machine for each of these. With some decent uh, uh, tier 6 modules to support them. Everything that we need for these builds just gets dropped off by train. And then it just kind of direct belts uh, to all of these. Because we don't want the trains to have to bother with the blank tech cards because they're not going anywhere else. Um, and yeah, outputs, export products go straight into train stops. Pre-rex get direct belted to various places. There's a little bit of... I don't want to say spaghetti. What the hell? How did this get removed? Bruh. Uh, that's just getting rid of some old cards. That's what all those chests are about. But yeah, we just request the appropriate resources with LTN, LTN, direct insert them to a machine that's right next to the containers. Very straightforward. How did you like Triple F? Uh, I like, I like. Lots of nice little quality of life improvements, stuff like that. Always good to see. Stuff that's like... Oh yeah, in hindsight, why didn't they do that sooner? Like the, uh... Something as simple as the display for... Uh, this this dotted line thing going green when you're on max distance for an underground pipe or belt. So you don't have to go one tile further to figure out where it reaches. Little, little, little uh, things like that that make all the difference. Love to see it. What's this? Okay. Um, what was I trying to figure out? Oh, yeah. I guess there's not going to be any variation 
uh, like with the spaceships, once we start, if we start using the Arculink chests like this, uh, we're not going to have to worry about the throughput of one of these changing. So there's probably absolutely no need to uh, to output this stuff to train stops. I mean, that might vary from block to block. Especially because, for example, crushed vulcanite goes elsewhere uh like to make vulcanite blocks for example nice to see the vulcanite blocks all saturated again i'm quite happy with that little refactor it's a little bit spaghetti to look at but the condenser turbines are much more condensed lamel And the whole thing fits together much more snugly, and it's quite clear to see what it's doing. No more mod needed for this. Wonder how many small ones will be added into the game. Uh, all of them. I hope. Just kidding. Uh, just kidding. I'm sure there's, I'm sure there's some quality of life things that maybe are not everyone's cup of tea. I guess, but. There's a lot of stuff that's like, yes, that should just definitely be in there. Requests for cable, ammo, train. Yeah, I know, I'm doing that last. It's we, We've got plenty of room for it. And that part's not going to be any, any trouble. Well, this is going to be basically the template for all of the other builds like it. So I guess I should... As a matter of course, keep the keep the train stops in here. Oops. Oh, come on. So by default, we'll split this in here. Uh, and same thing on the opposite side. I really kind of want to just split these apart just a little. Ooh, that might make that look better as well. Oh, but then this belt has to like squiggle out a little bit. I guess it's fine. Hold up. Yeah, we've got room. Just barely. So this would go here. And then... And this can be completely consistent. I like, I like. Get it, get out of here. Um just like that. Wait, what? Wait, what? It looks a little bit better. Okay. Same thing on the opposite side. What well, helps if I move this out first? Just like that. Is that actually 
Yeah, it is. Lines up perfectly. Uh, and then this can go over here. And then that just looks super, super neat and deliberate. Also, I guess it's a little bit easier to see what's on the belt here, I suppose. Okay. Uh, I thought I was going to finish a little bit earlier, but I got a bit carried away here today. Should probably save some energy for tomorrow. Um, but you can definitely see where this is going. We might... Clean this up a little bit. And... We need... It was constant combinator... Filter inserter... Set filters blacklist... And negatives for... Whatever it is we're trying to ignore, right? Because we've only got so many filter slots. So that's that side of it. Uh, and I guess we could just put a requester chest here or something. I mean, technically, I could probably put, like, a train stop and direct insert this stuff, but... Don't we need a... I don't think we do need a roboport on this side. It might just be a bit more convenient and neat. Me like carried away, indeed. Swap top, top half outside fluid input as well. Uh, yeah, I did. I deleted and then copy-paste flipped. That's so much more consistent. Oh, you mean over here. Right, right, right. Da -da -da, da -da -da -da. A little bit more consistent. Uh, Gzugors, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. I guess I can put this down here. It might look a bit more... Like it's where it's supposed to be. Maybe a 2x2 two two requester, just so it looks neater. Uh, again, I don't know if we put this requester over here. It might look a little bit neater. Oops. Over this way, train stop's going to be in the way of this requester. Um, I could always move these up a bit. We can put this almost wherever we like. Why don't we try that? I'll have to move these a little bit, obviously. Something like that, perhaps. May as well move it one more tile up, since we already have to move this over here. So the Arco chest needs another inserter outputting from there. We also need output for destroyed. Ah, true. Yeah, that kind of makes me want to put it on either side. Uh, 
Uh, this one was unconditional, right? Except that it has a filter. Uh, and this will probably be for getting rid of destroyed power packs or whatever. Mm. Okay, can I move this down... Like three tiles. Or maybe two tiles would look a little bit better. Actually, that still lines up over there. I don't like how cluttered this is with the train stop, though. Especially since there's going to be another constant combinator like right here. Just one more tile away. How about we put this here? I think that looks fine actually. I mean, it's okay. I don't love this being on the corner. I think it's a little bit better than... Eh, on second thought. I take everything back. Because that's in line with these swappers right here. Don't stare into chest, it will steal your soul. But gazing into the abyss is one of my hobbies. Uh, where does this power pole fit? Oh, god damn it. No. 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 What if we put this little combinator over here? What then? There we go. Did we end up put Did we end up putting this back exactly where it was? I think it's like one tile off. Big no, indeed. You sure put it exactly where it was? Probably. But this works. I don't mind this. Alright. Uh, we're going to need a Robo port. Where the heck is it? Of course I already had them. Um, and I don't exactly want the robot network to be encroaching on nearby blocks if they exist. Uh, I want just enough room for the logistic network range. to sort all of that out. Let's limit this to 50 stacks. 
And we could just make a filtered destroyed space train power pack right there. Should probably limit that to like one stack. That would be active provider. Gonna take a long time to fill up a hundred stacks of those. Wait, I think that is short train only stuff. Destroyed space train power pack. That's discharged. Where do we recycle them? Destroyed. Yeah, 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 it's right here. Short trains only. Okay. That way we don't need a redundant chest here either. Keep the filter. Well, I guess there's no reason to cap this then. Or this. That's going to take a very long time to overfill before a train comes. Uh, we don't need this at all, actually. We don't need a get rid of anything that doesn't belong in this robot network. Vanilla train stop here, I don't think. I could probably just do a short train to provide media ammo and stuff, but I think we'll just stick to what we've been doing, as far as that's concerned. Uh, so I guess this goes here, except we don't need... Well, we, we would typically not need sulfuric acid. I'm just going to put a zero signal there for it. Because when I copy-paste edit this to make another block, um, I don't want fluid coming when I forget about it. And I guess we don't need to read from the... Logistic network contents. Because we can literally just store everything right here. That big chest feels kind of out of place though. We need the tanks then for the fluid. True that. Uh, I think we'll just put it where the requester is. Can't fit this here. We could definitely fit it on this side. We're not going to go through fluid super fast here. Even if we did build this monstrosity that can consume 264, that's 13 and a half uh, stacks of core fragments per second, uh, it would still only be 26 sulfuric acid per second, so... We don't need to stress too, too much on how quickly the train can drop off over here. Not to mention that we're not going to be dropping off space elevator cable, ammo, and space train power packs super quickly either. Um, that said, I think we'll do a 2x2 two two chest for each of these. That's the same as two regular chests. Uh, wait, that's only 96 stacks. I was trying to think of one train load for each. Didn't we used to have... No? Oh. Yeah, this is like one of the few things where we don't request an entire train load of stuff. All right, yeah, let's just use one storage chest for 
each of those resources. Um, is it really only three things that we're sending through? Cable. Ammo. And power pack. Discharged. I think so. I guess we could just, like, put those here. That looks kind of wonk. Cable, ammo, pack. Alright, but we want LTN to know what's in here. Don't really care about LTN knowing what's in here. That should be fine. And I'm pretty sure that's basically it. Plus or minus a couple of little touch-ups. Like train stop name. Whoops. Just for the sake of the template, we'll pretend that we're actually going to train this stack size 10 stuff out of here. Um, but yeah, that looks pretty decent to me, I guess. I was going to do it. Why don't we just do it like this? little test input over here. Uh, loader like soda. Core frag, iridite. Whoops. And sulfuric. Didn't connect the pipes yet. Could do it like this. Oh, that's that that couldn't have lined up better. Beautiful. Uh, I could also connect them up this way, so that we don't have such small wonky little connections over here. But I guess it's probably fine. That doesn't look too bad. Except for this little bit. Cheat pipe. Sulfuric acid. Make sure everything's filtered to go where it's supposed to. One station didn't get the rename. No, it did. I copy-pasted it. Cool. Doesn't look like these are going to belt bottleneck. Or not even close. And I should think so. Fantastic. Uh, I guess the only downside with this build is we need to manually put in a Logibot or 50. But that's fine by me. I was going to say, I don't know why I like this one going south to north, but 
it's definitely so that we stick with the same convention of where the where these two output stations are. Now we need a redesign of the spaceship side. Uh, true, but we should probably actually test and confirm that uh, we can actually put this Arco Link storage down here first. But I'm pretty clapped by now. It's getting close to the time that I would finish anyway. Let's give it a save real quick. Start looking for someone to raid. That is a huge mosquito. A really huge. Damn. Uh, Alright, who are we who are we gonna raid today? Thank you, thank you. Have a great day. Thank you, Ian Neuer. Veldak, Mr. Dane, perhaps. Thank you all for hanging out today. Lord Seri, Turtle. Everyone else, Artur's Lackett. Chris. Everyone else, including all you lovely lurkers. Thank you all for watching. Do take care. And I'll see you next time out the discord or blueprints if you're into that if you have any questions or anything by all means and till next time stay safe see you tomorrow guys